Hey! How y'all doing? My name is Ultimate DJs. Welcome in to Twitching Trick. This evening, we are going to tinker around, play a few events, see what kind of mischief we can get into. You know, you know. Should be a little bit fun. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Hopefully. Yo, what's up, Triplets? Thank you for your 14 month resub. Look at you, 14 months. It's hard to believe it's been that long, Trader. 14! Crazy. That is, in fact, amazing. It's crazy! Yo, what's up? Retrieving Lord of Scare Inspector, Cruzito, Freelancer, Iron Chef, Darth Danacan, Joker is hanging out. What's up, Jules Fire? Doug, Jules, hop on the stage if you'd like. Doug, what's up? Bel Air, Dark Sider, Dr. Juby, Quad Bad, and look at that. Tiberius, Tiberius is raiding in, everybody. What's up, Tiberius? Thank you. Thank you, Tiberius, raiding into the channel. 38 Tiberius is awesome. 38 Tiberians. What do you mean he's frozen? Oh, I'm frozen. My bad, there you go. <laughs> Woo, yay! Now I'm unstuck. Hey, you want to see me get stuck? There, I'll just stay like that. <laughs> you just want me to stay like that for a while? <laughs> there you go, trainer. That's how I'm going to stay. Just like that. That is perfect. That is that is picture perfect. I couldn't do that again if I tried. <laughs> I couldn't do that again if I tried. Good evening, everybody. Welcome in. Tiberius, how was your stream, man? Were you good? Did you have a good day? Uh, yes. Voltron, we have, uh, we have a new treasury banner. It's not this anymore. All right, now it is your ship has leveled up. <laughs> I know. I know, Racer. Bubba Joe said the same thing. Aw, oh, Trader, thanks. Gee shucks. Bubba Joe told me the same thing. He said, I can't believe you. you've done a, a piece of content every day this week. I know. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. I'm trying to get back into a trader. You know? That cat face. Isn't it splendid? Yeah. <laughs> I find it to be extremely splendid. I'm going to leave it just like that for you guys for a little bit. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's it. Hey, let me uh, let me say a couple of thank yous here real quick. Let's see. What do we got? <clears throat> what do we got? We got triplets at 14 months. That's crazy. Uh, we got Chris asking for a hydrate and a random thought. I'll give you that in a second. Tiberius rating in with all his Tiberians. Thank you. Hey, Bubba Joe, I thought you were going to bed. Bubba Joe, resub in 14 months. Thank you. Trader at 14 months as well. It is hard to imagine. Thank I you. know. It's hard to imagine. Big Guns, thank you for your four-month resub. Appreciate you. Uh, Trader dropping 10 more gifted into the chat. If you just got a free gifted sub, then you be sure and say thank you. That would be V2, Techix, uh, Amal, a Amal, Scratchy. <laughs> I'm going to F with you. <laughs> I like your name. <laughs> uh, Casper, Razahound, Freezing, Monkey, Cardboard, and Tanez. Hook it up with free complimentary gift subs, courtesy of the one and only Trader. Uh, thank you, Benny Hill, dropping five kitty bitties in. Looser with the 13-month resub. Iron Chef with 100 kitty bitties. And 3M hooking up with a free uh, gift sub from Trader as well. Oh, you and Lieutenant Bennett asking for FaceTime. All right, hang on. I wasn't. By the way, Doctor Doctor Juby says that that cat face should be on merch, and I agree. If that is a great cat face, isn't it? That's it a, is. That's a good one. All right, let me. I got it. I'm coming, Lieutenant Bennett. I had to turn on all the lights. I, I was sitting in the dark. <laughs> I was sitting in the dark. All right. No judgment. So am I. Yeah, seriously, sometimes it's just a little bit peaceful. Sometimes just a little bit peaceful to sit in the dark. Chat is right, though. We think that you were actually putting on pants. Why, why do you guys got to blow up my spot like that? 
Why? Well, just because I'm stalling here for a minute and and tripping over my pants legs. All right. I mean, hang on. I'm just gonna buckle the belt. All right. There you go. Here's your FaceTime. <laughs> And I had to put on a shirt. I had to listen. I was I was full on necky. I was full on necky <laughs> in here. You know, listen. The other night we raided into that sandwich dude, uh, trader. We raided into that yeah. sandwich dude, and I mean, not that I wouldn't have raided into him. Dude was legit topless. He was. Wow. He, he was streaming. He he said he was a few beers in, and <laughs> and he was uh, he was necky. He was having a fun time. He was having a fun time, uh, fun time in his in his deli. Good for him. With no Good clothes. Good for him. You know what? If you can't be naked in your own home, right? While you're streaming on Twitch, when can you be? If you can't be naked for the whole world to see, what's the point of being naked, right? Yep. I'm with you. Uh, just Q. <laughs> Q. Uh, let's see what we got. Oh. Freelance. Oh man, my camera, my camera's whitewashed. Hang on, let me fix it. You know, this is why DJ doesn't wear pants. Yeah, because <laughs> I forgot. There we go. All Angel. right, fixed. I wasn't planning on going on camera, so I, I forgot the other thing. Here, let me let me fix the other camera too, just in case we switch over. Deep in thought. There we go. We're good. Uh, yeah, no, the the light was a little bright. I just now fixed it because I, so every time I turn on my camera, it it, it resets to these weird settings, and uh, and I it whitewashes everything. So I have to fix it back to my settings. I have a little notepad that I keep. And I always change it back to what it was. Uh, yeah, sandwich dude was six core. He drinks Coors Light. Oh my God, we're besties. Blech. You hear that? You hear that, Ripper? Blech. Ripper! Ripper! You should drink real beer. Ripper, where are you? Ripper! Another Coors Light fan. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Alpha Gibbs on server 155. Welcome to the litter box. Appreciate you being here. My name's Ultimate DJs. Hi, how are you? Louis P. dropping five gifted into the chat. Thank you. Uh, pierced one with the nine month resub. He says nine months. Does that count as a Twitch baby? It does. Or he said fur baby. We, we could go with the Twitch baby. That's it. Uh, Eric off. Thank you for following the channel. Welcome into the litter box. Appreciate you. Q with a hundred kitty bitties. Carissa with the 14 month resub freelancer dropping 1000 kitty bitties in here. Thank you so very much. Razless uh, asked me to make the hat bigger. But I'm not wearing a hat, Razzlis. I have a hat to wear, though. It's in the so floor. Just, just Q is asking if uh, he's seeing a 5 o'clock shadow there. That's why I wasn't going on camera. I haven't shaved. I haven't done nothing to myself. I mean, I'm all, I'm all disheveled. You need some more hats, DJs. I quite like the hats that I have. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the hat that you have. I just think that you need some more. I do need more. I do probably I think that need you, more hats. I think that you should let chat tonight pick a couple of new hats for you off of Amazon, and you can put them on throne. Uh, okay. If you say, <laughs> it's if it's you an say early so. Father's Day gift. Yeah, it could be. Sure, I'm down with that. You guys want to pick hats? That's fine. Uh, yeah. I know. You're the best. You know, Give me really, hugs. honestly, I've thought about like installing a boom or something like in here. But Chief, I, I like this mic. This mic sounds so good. This mic makes me sound professional. I like this one. Um, uh, let's see. So thank you, Razzlas, for for asking for the hat. Appreciate that. I'm Trader so dropping positive. another ten. I'm full of positive energy. Thank you. I got positive energy too. Thank you, uh, Trader, for dropping another ten. Louis P has asked me to change my name. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what? Oh come on. Really? All right. Uh, Trader scooped. I don't even think that actually happened. 
Trader, did no, you actually scoop? I don't think you scooped I cracked you. I didn't scoop you. Yeah, that's right. I don't think that actually happened. Now we're just making stuff up. Now we're just making things up, everybody. Um, hey, I have big news. Oh, Ooh, what's your big news? says early fur Thursday. <laughs> I like it. That's cute. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, it is cute. Bubba, Bubba is taunting me in the chat. If you're going to taunt me in the chat, you need to come up into, uh, into voice. <laughs> if you're gonna, if Louis you're gonna P says, me, "Okay, you can, you can change your name to Trader Crack to me." Okay, he will compromise. Uh, yes, you're correct, Chief. The banana really seals the professionalism here. It's a very professional look. Bye -bye. It's, it's a five o'clock peel. What are you doing? I'm falling asleep. What does it seem like I'm doing? Oh, uh, why are you falling asleep, man? Why are you falling asleep? Because it's late for me. Bubba, it's only 10. Oh, it is. It's double digits. When it's double digits PM, Bubba Joe's out. Out like a light. Bubba Joe is in full ASMR talk mode. Yeah, you hear that? I'm going to I want to turn the music down for a second. I'm just going to turn <laughs> Bubba Joe up. Hey, Bubba, <laughs> can you read us a nursery rhyme? Here, let me let me find something. You can just tell us a story, Bubba Joe. Yeah, can you tell us a bedtime story? <laughs> I don't know that I have any bedtime stories. You've got bedtime stories. Once upon a time. <laughs> once upon a time, there was a Bubba named Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, once upon a time, there was a little boy who lived on a planet with two sons. Oh, was that? He fun? lived with his aunt and uncle <laughs> and had a favorite droid. Come on, Bubba Joe, you know this story. He didn't have a favorite droid. What are you talking about? No, he didn't like droids. <sighs> really? Hmm. He didn't. He didn't have now droids you're just until much difficult. later. Now you're being difficult. Very <laughs> difficult. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn in I'm gonna turn on some appropriate some appropriate bedtime music here. So are we talking about the, the orphan boy with the uh, odd magical like powers that lived with his aunt and uncle he um, technically wasn't an orphan at that point um, technically are we talking about he was the a one poor that, motherless boy though but are we talking about the one that lives in the desert or the one that lives on privet drive because we could be describing the same two people <laughs> <laughs> that's funny the one lives in the desert the poor have motherless you not, boy have you not heard that joke DJ what J.K. Rowling didn't write a masterpiece. She wrote Star Wars with crappy lightsabers. Oh, stop it. I love Harry Potter. It's true. I love Harry Potter too, but it's true. Is it really? You have an orphan boy who lives with his aunt and uncle who don't really like him. He was dropped off there by an old bearded wizard who then comes to pick him up many years later as he's starting to become a, you know, a young adult, takes him to go learn about this mystical force, to teach him about this mystical force. Then eventually he's going to go from that old bearded individual to an even older bearded, more eccentric individual. He's going to have his best friend who is, um, who ends up getting the girl uh, even though there's this re weird sexual tension with the girl that's part of their threesome. Which which story am I talking about? Well, you had me up until the threesome, because I don't think that happened in Harry Potter. You're telling me there was no attraction between Harry and Hermione at all? No. That's incorrect. There, there probably <laughs> was. There probably was. But, you know, if that was the case, then why didn't that eventually ever happen? Like, it never happened. Just saying. Anyway, uh, if, it, if it was an actual... This is why... If it was an actual women, thing... You know what? Wolfwood's right. Did Harry lose a hand? Nope. No, he just lost, you know, just walked around with a giant scar on his face. Was Voldemort Harry's dad? Nope. Saying. Yes, but the Voldemort of 
of uh, the fact that Voldemort was somehow was attached or either. related, considering that Voldemort was very attached to Harry in the same way that Darth Vader was attached to Luke. Juby says, but you can't say that name. Uh, Dr. Juby also alleged. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, Putz says that we're all incorrect. He said that Hermione and Harry had a professional love uh, that morphed into a friendship. Sounds boring. Well, they never even got to like. Well, they never even got to like have. And fun I'm just. With it. I'm just wondering how we got to this conversation from me starting to tell the wonderful bedtime story of the little boy who grew up on a planet with two sons. You know, well, you actually said grew up with his aunt and uncle, which automatically disconnected Anakin and made it about Luke. It but, is about Luke. And, but Luke didn't build it's any. Luke, Luke didn't have any droids that, as a kid. Oh, that's my true. God. That's true. Bubba Joe. He didn't. Luke, Luke to, was uh, a... Bubba's point, though, uh, both Voldemort and Darth Vader were absolutely fixated with the main character, and it, it just they they just believed that they were the key to their power, like the key to moving on. Fixated on them. These are all true statements. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. I'm disappointed DJ? in all of you. I DJ? agree. Yes, Bubba. Enjoy your fake mic, the mic that's going to lie to everyone tonight. No, you know what? Here, before you go, I have good news. Okay, I'll, I'll listen for good news. I have good news. I was going to I was going to make... Is it that the Voyager is going to be fixed? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know about all that. Actually, we did have a good conversation today. I know that they're looking. Hold on, let me see. They, they gave me um, a priority list in which, you know, because I gave them a bunch of stuff, Bubba. Um, let's see. Okay, so what's already being fixed, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell this yet. Has there been an announcement from Echo today? No. Okay, well, then I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and throw it out there. So the ship was not supposed to be ops locked at ops t at tier two for 39, so they're fixing that. Um, so now uh, you should be able to get it to tier four as an ops 39. Um, that's one thing. Let me let me look at something here. The the reason for that, Bubba. Actually, I have more good news. I have more. Here, let's pull up. Let's pull up stfc.space. The reason for that was because of the upgrade costs. So here, let, let's find it. Here, to go to tier two, took G three to go. Yeah, G three, G three, G four. Right. So you will be able to now take it to tier four. They put an ops lock at tier two. But it still only takes three star materials. They meant to put the ops lock at tier four because to go to tier five, it takes four star materials, which is relatively normal. So now, or at least when the hot patch is rolled out, which I was told it was going on, it was going to happen earlier today. It may not. But that was, uh, they're moving the ops lock to tier four. So that's good for 39 and down because that ship does become much more useful at tier four um they are aware of all of these weird ship bugs and the ship xp and stuff they say they're working on that i don't know if they've got a hot fix ready for that but they said that they're working on that and they know what's going on with that let's see what else were they aware of requiring that g4 coaxial component at every single tier it's required at every tier it was required at tier three. It was required at tier four. It doesn't show in FTFC out of space, but it shows in for the tier component. two in STFC out of space. Um, but no, I'm pretty sure it wasn't supposed to be there until tier four. That's what they're fixing. So they're going through and they're fixing that. Um, okay. Let's see. There was one other. There's two other things. So Bubba, they are looking at the upgrade costs. Ah, they're looking at upgrade costs, but they are also prioritizing my request for expanded base cargo. Yeah, so uh, 
I actually looked at the base cargo today of some, you know, of some ships. Yeah, they're it's and, uh, it's only going to be at the at the earlier tiers though. I don't think they're going to scale it much at the high end. I, and I don't think it needs to be scaled much at the high end. Yeah. Um, but just to give you an example, okay, the Voyager's base cargo is three thousand. Okay? Correct. Yeah. Which is not a lot, no. but you know you're going to end up with something that's a little more than twice that. Compare that to a tier one Enterprise, right? Ops thirty four ship tier one enterprise to a tier one voyager a tier one enterprise which by the way is not going to have any success defeating these hostiles no okay has sixteen thousand base cargo yeah like i understand that the voyager gets to a reasonable cargo at some point in you know not too far along but starting at 3k is just it's it's unusable for at least two of the things you need to use it for Oh yeah, yeah. That's so. You remember when um, I came out, Bubba? You and I came out and kind of said, I think it was when Mantis came out and said, "Listen, don't use the Mantis, right? Like we're going to use normal ships." Yep. Um, I think that was was that the time trader when I was telling him about kind of how what my recommendations were. Oh no, it was Tally. It was the Tally, and I said, you know, hey, don't use the Tally until at least tier four, tier five, right? And game design was like, oh, well, that's not ideal. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. Well, then make an ideal ship. Well, we had that same conversation again today. I said, listen, nobody mm. nobody should be, nobody G4 plus should be using Voyager until, you know, tier four, tier five. Now, granted, the tier one, tier two Voyager, it's proving effective for G3 players. Okay. It yes. is. It's, it's proving As effective. As you would expect. Yeah. Um, but for for G four, you're really not gonna come into this ship until probably tier three, tier four, and uh, and it's better to to use a different ship. So they're looking at at the cargo specifically as related to the mining uh, piece of it. Hey Stuart, thank you for your nine month resub. Appreciate that very much. Uh, so they're looking at that, uh, Bubba Joe, and they said that they would look at material upgrade costs, but the cargo was their larger priority so that's good news i, I would agree with that priority i think the cargo is yeah. the it, you know the ship is going to be expensive and the people that have already blown past those limits don't care yeah i mean they they, they just don't i mean i yes they they will want some sort of compensation but literally if they've invested what it takes to blow this thing past tier five or six they just don't care they're just spending to act to, to accelerate it. So yes. I'm not going to have a lot of sympathy. Um, I, I think they would be do a little bit of something, but I, I just don't think that they care. Um, but the costs need to be looked at. Like I don't see a path for someone who is coming into G4. Now I do not see a path for them to upgrade this ship. The costs are so astronomical. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're looking at that. Uh, that was, there besides the war blocks which they, apparently they've already done that was supposed to have rolled out today uh cargo was the next priority upgrade costs were the next priority and one thing that we didn't really talk about as a community but i took it upon myself was to request a reduction of cooldown on the species on the biotoxin refinery so that people can get their cells and mine easier I think that's actually really important. Yes. Um, uh, I told that, him, you know, I told him that the, I felt like the anomaly samples were okay. That is where mm -hmm. the direct shards come from, Bubba. I do think it's slow, but, you know, I said, we don't want to put the pressure on for this to be an everyday thing. I said, but people can passively mine, you know. So I pitched for a reduction of the species 8472 loot exchange to 24 hours so that people could get their cells easier. Well, and so if they if they do that and don't change the cargo much, I'm going to be a little bit less cranky about it. Um, well, I asked them to do both, but I we'll, think we'll that the cargo is the better solution because it's going to give players that advancement path. But mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not going to be uber cranky if they if they choose to only give us more cells because that's yeah. again cells are the, the cells are the problem, right? The cells for the low cargo or why the low cargo is a problem. You don't need the low cargo for the first level of loot. You can just send your ship 50 times, right? Yeah. It'd be annoying, but you have that option. Yeah. When you limit access to another type of resource, 
through the cells and the cells have a multiple day cooldown, that's where things go wink. Yep, I agree. Um, so that's what I've asked for is more cells and I asked for a reduction on that chest. I asked for cargo, upgrade costs, and tier locks. Um, all of which are actively being discussed and considered. So I, uh, I feel good about that, Bubba Joe. I have more good news. Is it bedtime yet? Almost. <laughs> almost, Bubba. Okay. I have more good news. I now have been... Re I have received positive confirmation, Bubba Joe, that Captain Catherine Janeway's officer ability is indeed additive. Which makes her stupid. Makes her stupid. Gonna make this weekend. It makes her awful. Don't don't spend on the auction. Just don't just let spend me go on first. the auction. Trust She's me. gonna be yeah, the terrible, terrible. Um. So yes, this was the example that was given to me. If you have 0% isolytic and you have a tier 1 Captain Janeway, then you would do 100% standard and 10% isolytic. That's, so, that's wow. Pre that's pretty significant, isn't it? That's that is spicy. A, that's 10% at tier 1 net damage yield. It's pretty significant. That is significant. That's going to require some testing to see how that's going to work, how that's going to look in terms of do you get what you lose by having her be your captain? Oh, I think there's no way that you wouldn't. Well, I, yeah. okay, but like you're going to pair her with probably Paris and someone else, right? You're losing some effectiveness from the bridge, right? You're going to pair her with... Um, you know, uh, you're not going to have mitigation or you're going to pair her with less synergy. Like, I think there's going to be some interesting combinations to get that net 10% boost, but a net 10% boost is well is worthwhile. Yes, it's big, yeah. I, I also think that... Um, I think that she's not going to be broad case use everywhere. Like, I think that she is going to be super ideal against these Delta Quadrant hostiles, obviously. Um, but listen, in other cases with other hostiles, you might still do better with Strange New Worlds or do better with a more traditional crew. But with these hostiles, we've established that it's not about mitigation at all. It's about maximum damage output. And because you don't, there's no, there's no survivability. You're not gonna die before round eight. You know what I'm saying? You will die at round eight if you have not killed that thing. So the focus with the Delta Quadrant Hostiles is indeed on damage. That's why I, I think, Bubba Joe, maybe she's not a new number one grinding crew everywhere, okay? But against the Delta Quadrant Hostiles, I think she will be absolutely the crew of choice. She's got a case use in solo armadas too, right? She works against armadas. Yes. Yeah. And as, as so if you're three. using a specialty ship like a Talios on a Borg solo, you're going to get some crazy damage out of that. True. Yeah. So. And what um, happens with uh, Picard Bev Janeway? <clears throat> Picard Bev Janeway would. Ooh, spicy. Ooh. Yeah. That would be that would be big too. <laughs> oh, <Bubba. laughs> what? <laughs> what just uh, happened? Did Bubba Joe just like yawn or something? Yes, yes while talking. <laughs> it is late. Oh, I thought he was doing a catchphrase. Murphy said, "Would the ability be boosted by Piker Picard?" Yeah, it would because that's a battle ability. So yeah. Well, what's what's the wording? What do you mean? What's the wording? Is so, it a start of battle trigger or is it a start of? No, like, it's it's. Uh, isn't it every? Uh, hold on, let me go and look. We're not talking about her captures ability. Captures ability is every time she gets hit. That one, you know. Yeah. But the officer ability. What is the officer ability? Officer ability is at the start of combat. Jane Wayne. So, nope. 
will not be affected by pike. You know what? You're probably right because usually at those start of combats, that's a that's like a pre-battle calculation, and then uh, the only the ones that happen at the start of the round are the ones that are affected. Yeah, I bet Pike and Picard will not affect her. That'll be well, an easy Stewie test. Stewie Do agrees with me, so I feel like that's confirmed. Yeah, I, that'll be a very easy test, but yeah, I think you're right. That will not uh, be affected by that. Wait, Joker is disappointed by this information? Why? Probably because she's going to be harder to get. Oh, uh, she will be harder to get. Yeah, that's for sure. Um... Let's see. Savage Darkness says, when are flash events happening? That is tomorrow on Friday. <clears throat> Purge day. Purge day is tomorrow. Yeah, DJ, you can also let Scopely know that if they want me to go 50 plus. All they need to do is make it so when I hit 50 plus, I don't stop earning officer, new officers. You know, the that's a thing. As a matter of fact... I, I made a pretty good case today, Bubba Joe, that, uh, by the way, FaceTime is over. Back to the cat. FaceTime's over. Whoa! Oh, it's still stuck there. I forgot. All right, let me... <laughs> That's funny. All right, I'll fix it. All right. Um, I made a really good case today, Bubba Joe, because I'm an Ops 53. I said, well, there's zero chance I'm going to unlock this officer, so maybe you should just give her to me so that I can show everybody what isolytic damage is going to look like and how valuable it should be. And ideally, why don't we do that before the first auction? And the answer wasn't no. <laughs> uh, I got a good little chuckle, and then they said they would discuss it. So maybe, maybe I'll actually get her. I doubt it. They're not going to give me that be cool though if they did you should just compromise with the heroic sms you know you should just win the auction oh just tell jonathan to sit down and beat him okay that sounds easy enough <laughs> that sounds easy enough you wanted to build your corvus right yeah but i'm still not going to outscore them <laughs> by the way bubba joe i don't know if you're watching your screen because i know you're sleepy um I uh, I have adopted uh, Tal in Axion Space now, now that I've earned him free to play. So I've got my pylum up should. here. I'm, I've got my pylum up here at the 49s. You know, crazy enough, it's not as much as I would have thought. I'm earning about double the loot before my cargo fills up. But, like, my, my Mantis cargo has done pretty good. Like, I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape. Wait until you can take your Talios there and max its cargo with Tal. Oh, I ran out of cells. I just I just now used my last one. I would have totally done well, that. Your Talios is not big enough to do the 49s. You would end up grinding on one of the others, but oh. yeah. How big how big does my Talios need to be? It's tier six now. Uh for the 49s? Well Mine kept dying as a tier eleven. Well, it doesn't necessarily need to be the 49s. I just want more loot, right? But I don't want to spend all day doing it either. So what? Like 47s, 46s? Uh, probably. I wonder if I can do a cell redeem. I, I don't think I can. I think I did it today. Yeah, crap. Man, that would have been a great test. I wish you had said that like three minutes sooner. Poopy. That would have been a cool test. Uh, I, I refused to grind anything less than the 49s because I was already doing that. And I didn't want to, like, get less loot because that would just annoy me. So, Yeah, but you I, wouldn't be getting less loot if you were filling up more cargo. Well, true, no. but I, you know, you know how much I like grinding. You like it as much as I do, I think. Uh, yeah, what? I think we both, we both love grinding um, at exactly zero, unless there's bumping. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. That was funny. Um, so what am I... I um, say, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was also going to say, if you're going to use like a weak ship like that, one thing to possibly consider is that instead of five, use Beverly, the shield regeneration. Yeah, but that means I'll have to grind even longer. And if I don't use yeah, my pylum, I'm not getting that loot. is a hefty amount of loot. But my tier nine was surpassing my pylum. 
with that same crew. And now tier 10, I'm getting about a million. Well, I do just want to point out that six hostiles filled my pylum. That's a pretty good feeling. I'm pretty happy with that. Benny Hill says, welcome to the Church of Tau. <laughs> yes. Um, Vic says, what crew do I have? Uh, here, I'll show you. This is the uh, Tau crew that everybody's been screaming about. That is five as captain, Giorgio on the side, and Tau on the other side. And then I am using, um, I've got Hugh under deck, Galinar under deck, the Doctor under deck. Oh, and La'on. And La'on under deck. So those are the four I've got under deck on that ship. But I've got no cells left, so I can't try it on a Vidar. Poop. That's all right. I've got to do... I've actually got to go hit some uh, Herogen here tonight, too. Yes, I do have La'on under deck. Use four or Ston instead of five. Ooh. That's going to slow me down by half, man. Listen... I'm already getting double the loot that I was getting before, so, like, I'm probably good with six hostiles, Bubba. I mean, I could get more, but I'm probably good. Under deck, yeah, uh, the Doctor, Galinar, Hugh, and Laon. Yeah, I could have used a Cargo X, so I didn't think about that. So, yeah, I could have done that. But now i got to switch it up. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go with my Apex crew and go hunt Herogen, which people have been telling me, Bubba, five Lorca Kang. That's what people have been saying. Now, I'm going to go with Lorca Kang. Well, I'm going to go Gorkon instead. But yeah, that's what that's what people have been saying. So against their Herogen or against the 8472 hostiles? Oh, I thought both. Blue. Well, Herogens or... are battleships. Oh, so Charbonnet. Okay. Well, they don't have that big gun until 10, though, do they? We'll try We'll try it this way. Oh, uh, Wardot is, is coming to kill something. Yes. Good night. Hey, good, good night, night, Bubba. Bubba Love you, man. Listen, I, you later. I can't tell if my ships are upgrading or if Wardot actually killed them. <laughs> I can't tell if I actually got XP or if Wardot killed my ship. I feel like he's going to come in and chase that other Meridian. Where you at, Wardod? Where you at, man? I know he's here. So, Jazzmeister, that's what we were just talking about. The recommended crew. Jules, you you hop in here. Because I did not do great testing the other night. But, um... Five, Lorca or Gorkon, and Kang against the bio ships, right? Yes, and that's either using the Voyager and summoning, or using any other ship and using the Voyager to summon and killing it with your other ships. Or that's in the token systems while you're trying to punch up. But to be honest, Jazzmeister, depending on how much you like grinding, you may want to go down to a lower level, say the 35 system, and just use a max loot crew slash, you know, a max loot slash max cargo crew. So five, four, Ston. I am because... hearing that even those 35s are having their way with early G4 ships. Yeah, yep. that's what I've heard too. So in that case, I think early G4 ships and below, you need to punch up with your crews. For G4 rares, I think that you can use your max loot slash cargo crew in those 35 systems. And for the 41, I can't remember whether that's a 40 system or 41. It's a 40 hostile, level 40 hostile, except 3819. Uh, it was a struggle. You were doing that with your Tau crew on your pylum, and you have a pretty strong pylum. I know, uh, but Blue I still... Blue was doing that. I still died on here? one. Yeah, Blue's here. Blue was right doing here? that. Yeah, you were uh, boosting with Cerritos boost, and you were doing pretty well, 
and then your Cerritos fell, and you died horribly. Uh, well, I it, I was perfectly. I had perfectly. I got distracted one time, and my timer ran out. But while the timer was running, I could kill the forties pretty easily. So my G five uncommon, the Vorcha, it does pretty well in that system using max cargo slash loot crew. And I think we've seen a lot of screenshots of people with 200 million ships, G G5 rares, doing okay in the next size up. So yeah. that's kind of the recommendation. Less than 50 million, yeah, I go feel down like, to 35. Uh, greater than 50 million, go to the FSEP 38, 19, the 40s. Uh, and then greater than 200 million, go up even higher. Well, you know, I think one of the things that gave me a significant advantage, because I've had a lot of people come to me and tell me, yo, I don't know how you were doing what you were doing. And I think we might have forgotten, Jules, that I was running a 650% EXO. Um, well, three EXOs, totaling 650%. I think that had a, a lot to do with it because, again, obviously the goal of this is maximum damage output. Even the Voyager ship ability says that to us, right? It is damage. So I think that may have been one of the big things that that people might have missed or we didn't emphasize enough jules was we are trying to to jack up our damage and i had 650 percent worth of exos running which probably made a big difference probably made a big difference look dahaga said the same thing um it's the exos i did the same thing now dragon keeper again if, if you're doing this with a g4 ship so be it but you're an Ops 50 player. He says, I'm going four rounds with no Exos, but do keep in mind, we're hitting the same target. All right? Your ship is 100 million plus more powerful than mine. It's not about the survivability of our ships. It's about the size of the shots. So your G5 is throwing way bigger shots than my G4. So you can do loot crew. You don't need the Exos, but smaller ships, they need to amp up that damage. They have to. You know, this reminds me of when we were first looking at the Mantis and we were saying, hey, you could have more grind time, but get more cargo by putting max cargo on, or you yeah. can have less grind time and you can punch up in systems. This is basically the same, the same recommendations, but there's only three, four systems. Right. So it's that that's uh, definitely a larger barriers in between the two. I mean, you got to think them. as a as a G5 player, the equivalent of me hitting the 40s would be you hitting the 50s. You know, and um, at least as far as the ship strength that that is. All right. So, yeah, I would fully expect that your G5 ship is going to come down and hit the 40s pretty daggone simply. You know. But, um, and yeah, so right there, Dragon Keeper says, yeah, the level 51 token system is way too hard. So you got to remember, if you're doing that with a G5 ship and it's way too hard, then these 40s for G4 ships are going to be pretty stinking hard. You know, it's going to be a pretty, pretty big thing. So, yeah, damage is, is all about it. And I'll tell you, Jules, something else, uh, I've seen really really positive data out of low G4 and G3 players with respects to Tier 1 and Tier 2 Voyagers. I've seen surprisingly effective uh, battle logs with a Tier 1 and Tier 2 Voyager against those level 35s. Like, crazy. I'm, I'm, you know, I know a lot of people are saying, well, ships at Tier 1 and Tier 2 suck, but Bubba has actually done a good job at reminding us of this, Jules. At Tier 1, Tier 2, it is it is a G3 ship. It's meant for Ops 35, 36. So it naturally wouldn't be hitting the targets that I want to hit as a G4 player, you know? But for some of the G3 out there, this ship is absolutely effective out of the box. I, don't I have... think it's ramping. It's ramping up really quickly at tier three. I know that I've got more research. We've got more research for the same ops level. At tier three, it was already hitting level uh, fifty of the eight four seven nine hostiles and killing them. So yeah. like it's it's already a much better. And of course, I can't reach that warp range with any of my ships, yeah. including my G five uncommon. I I can't get there. So it's already effective on its own. 
Uh, Dragon Keeper, I didn't take Pick Bev. She's on a different ship. She's not on this ship. I had I had Pick Bev on a different ship from earlier, which actually reminds me. I don't think I've done my freebooters yet today either. Or my Titan or my Mantis. Sorry, right, gonna have to go do some stuff. And gonna I think Pick Bev on, on the bridge would be tough because you don't have a ton of rounds. She really needs to build up a little bit. Like if you're already running whole breach, why not add Pick Bev? Sure. But yeah, if you if you have to ramp up, you only get nine rounds to ramp up on the Herogen, and then you only get seven rounds to ramp up. That's not really a lot for Pick Bev. Yeah. Uh, Savage Darkness says my tier one Voyager can kill three or four of the level thirty seven bio ships. So you're referring, you're not referring to the token locked bio ships. You're looking at the at the bounty hunter. Bio ships. You know why they named those things the same, Blue uh, or Jules? I don't know. Like even in STFC.space, it's hard to differentiate between the two. Look here. Uh, this is the list of bio ships, but the top ten are the ones that you summon, and these bottom three are the ones behind the token lock systems. But they're literally named the same. There's no differentiation. As a matter of fact, even if you look at the power. The power is the same as their level equivalent. It's like it's the same hostile, but – and maybe it is just the a, same hostile. It is the same hostile. It just has a different loot table. So is that why it has a double entry, I guess? I would assume so. I guess. So, so if – We also made a chart. Uh, we're trying to chart the loot tables because I don't think that they're letting that information get into their SDFC.space. So we're starting to collect that from player source data in order to kind of see where the ramp ups are, some of this loot data. Well, I um, I haven't ground ground any of the bio ships today, but I know that um, that is where. By the way, we did finally get a glimpse inside one of those Borg gated systems. Um, they're basically so the assimilated data cubes, blue. They're mega scouts. A player destroyed one today and said he got like 5,000 messages. Let me see I if I they can. They said they got nothing. Not the player that I spoke to. Let me see if I can yeah, find. Canine, Canine Tooth hit a bunch and didn't get any of the, or got some mega chest and inside so, the mega chest there was nothing there. My best guess is that the confusion here is that well, there are two different hostiles, the roamers and the hunters that are triggered by a Voyager scan, right? No, no, no. He went into the Borg system and hit the assimilated data cube. And those data cubes were there without. He said scan. it he said it looked like a normal hostel, but if you clicked it, it said assimilated data cube. And um it had he said he got like four or five thousand messages. But remember, it would be easy to miss that because messages those are the messages are what scouts drop for faction credits. Like, was it dropping faction messages? Yes, but... Well, um, here's the interesting thing. There's assimilated Federation scouts yes. and there's assimilator data cubes. So the data oh, cubes were... are dropping the messages and the scouts are just dropping ship parts. Yeah. So the, they, they do have a faction tied to them. Okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to... I, I don't even remember who showed it to me. Here it is. Here it is. So here we go. The data board cube is a hostile. I went to the 55 system and killed it. It gave me 13,000. I was wrong. It gave me 13,000 Federation messages and 3,000 Romulan messages. The assimilated Borg scouts give normal amounts of ship parts like regular hostiles. The data board cube hostile is basically a super scout. However, I went back there today after 24 hours, and it was not there. I don't know how often it respawns or if somebody else had killed it. I did also have 5 of 11 on my ship. So then he went back to his inventory afterwards, and because remember, messages are not an inventory item. You don't hold them in your cargo. They go straight to inventory. So he sent me a message a little bit later and said, dude, that's not right. There must have been a mega chest because he made 30,000 Federation messages and 3,000 Romulan messages off of 
one assimilated Borg cube. He said it's definitely worth the trip, but we have to figure out what the spawn rate is, and if anybody else has gone in there before you, you could be sitting around for a very long time. I still want to know what happens if you trigger a Voyager scan wall within one. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, like Shinjo. Maybe that's a way to, it's like, it's like a random spawn, or you can like instantly trigger it with a scan. Maybe. Maybe. But... So the data cube is what you're looking for, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I posted a link for the missile up, which is the only one we can find in the system or in the SCFC.space. And the regular hostels in the system are 9 million, 11 million. And then the data cube is 131 million strength. What what crew would you use for that? Uh, he used five you said in Italios? I mean, well, no. I I wonder if the Italios no. would get a bonus. And again, you don't necessarily need it for cargo because messages aren't a cargo item. So very, very curious about what is going on up there or what the intention is. But he said he got 30,000 faction messages. So 867, those cubes, we are hypothesizing that those are the cubes that are locked behind um, these warp cells. No, that's a Delta Quadrant cell. This one right here that says Delta Quadrant board coordinate times 100. You can earn basically 20 at a time through RNG by killing species 8472 bio ships if you're lucky enough to get a uh, a mega chest or a bonus chest you know the loot drop chest then it can have 20 of those coordinates in it so you'd have to get five chests to be able to go into one system but until we map out the timing and and it is a fog of war system so that's dangerous man like if the respawn time is super long can you imagine how many people would go in there and then not want to leave because they spent their coordinates. You know what I'm saying? Like, that could just end up being a parking lot up there. Well, I'm going to go there now before anyone else in server 44 hears this. <laughs> I hope there's a cube in there. Go with a go with a good warship. Go with a good warship and go with a max damage crew. I guess. I don't know. Spectre, in all fairness, that may not be terrible game design. It's clearly content that that we were not intended to really engage with this month. It wasn't in the patch notes. They didn't brief me on it. It was probably just an advanced staging, like they launched it with the other systems. But clearly there's content there that we're not supposed to be engaging with yet. Yo, Rooster, I missed you, baby. I missed you. I'm sorry I missed you raiding in. What's up, LaRoostians? La Roosteronians, how you doing? Welcome in. Kinky Boots, thank you for your 10-month resub. 10 months, Trader, and I've enjoyed every moment, especially Trader's singing. Aw. That's so sweet. That is a blatant lie. That is not a lie. People love to hear your little ditty. I call BS. No. Here, I'm going to, you know what? I bet. Oh, God. I bet if I turned it on for free. Like everybody would start and playing. Now I've, got to, now I've got to mute the stream. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to actually. Not turn even off. I would hear myself sing. We're often our own biggest critics, Trader. Uh huh. Sure. That is that is a true thing. Um, let's see. I do need to uh, give you a random thought. I don't remember who asked for it. I've oh, thank you. Yo! Thank you, Theo. I'm going where my heart will take me. I've got faith. <laughs> I've got faith. Faith of the heart. Thank you, Theo. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Theo playing Trader Singing for 1,000 biddies. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. I've got a couple things. Chris, thank you for your hydrate. Um, Chris also asked for a random thought. I had one. Oh, this is cute. Is Karkin here? I actually had this thought, Trader. I had this thought about our dear friend Karkin. And, uh, you know, especially because, by the way, 
Karkin was the one who whose finger slipped off the mute button during the podcast the other day, and he, he belched loudly on the, on the podcast. And I kind of got to thinking in a conversation I was having later on with somebody else that tobacco, marijuana, beer, and whiskey, Trader, are all made from plants. So now I get it. That's why Karkin is a vegetarian. All right. Now we know. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We, what you neglected to tell the community was he tried to blame it on me. He did. Unsuccessfully, I might add. But he did try to blame yes. it on you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Karkin is a vegetarian. Now we know why. There you go, everybody. <laughs> 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 uh, yo, what's up, hey, Herdrini? Thank you for following the channel. Appreciate you. Welcome into the litter box. Appreciate you being here. My name is DJ. I play Star Trek Fleet Command, and I'm a cat. There you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and he arrives. Good evening, Karkin. How are you, baby boy? I'm good, good. <laughs> also, he, just... was, he was watching. He was like, wait a second. They're talking about me. I got to go. <laughs> they said call me a vegetarian. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may eat the food that my e- food eats, but it's more of a garnish <laughs> than some sort of <laughs> substance. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's so good. Uh, Neon says the rare anomaly pull is very expensive. I can see no way to get. Well, no. So you're looking at the double pull, and I do agree that. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult here at the early stages. Single you, pull's expensive. The single pull is expensive enough, but you got to be working on the single pull right now. The double pull is clearly there for down the road when we've got surplus. All right. That is not the case here today. Not the case here today. I actually have a theory on that. So there's going to be a point in which the Voyager Miner is going to be equal to or just less than what your warship is going to be that you'll be using oh yeah at that at that point because right now when you go in there with your warship into these token systems you're getting a lot of the common you're getting very little wear and even s- smaller amounts of the exotic biotoxins yes and i've got this huge surplus of common so the next warp cell i'm sending the voyager into mine rare only you're gonna send voyager though once it gets to the cargo size that's roughly the right size, I'm going to send the Voyager in. Because there's no way, even with a Nova, it's going to take me 20 days to get yeah, enough to do a I refine. Get, that's I, not worth it. I, you're right, but you, you're not going to – 500,000 cargo in the Voyager is going to take a long time to get there. It's really not, not for us. Okay, well, you have a cargo chart. Oh, yeah, I've got a cargo chart. Well, really, it's like, okay, so I'm getting 350 to 400K. Oh, my God, so you I, do have a cargo chart. Look at you. Of course you. I got a cargo chart. <laughs> when you get to that uh-huh. point in the loop and you're sending your Enterprise up there, are you required to do anything else with it, or is it just simply now you're going to mine? Because a cargo crew, like, what does that jump you up? Like so a full-out here, cargo. Look here, we got it. All right, so... That's tier twelve, you goofball. Well, no, dude, that's a that's a calculator. You get oh. to go in there and put your own values in. Well, okay, where is it? But the, if you look at the other the chart, if you look at the other chart. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, this one right here. Here we go. Okay, max cargo at tier one, sixteen thousand. Yeah, and I put in roughly ops range, ops <laughs> bracketing for there, just to kind of show some ex- example of different cargos. But somebody who is, you know, an Ops 53 running around with a Tier 4, we're going to have a higher max cargo than what, I've, than what shows there. So you have to kind of, like, figure out your own max cargo. So really, truthfully, at Tier 3, we should be able to mine enough rare for a single pull. Exactly. But we're not going exactly. to we're not be able to do a double pull until we get to Tier 7. But the double pulls are going to get more expensive. So I don't think that you'll ever be able to double pull off of a single cell. Yet again, that's a seven-day cooldown, and you'll get at least one cell a day unless some changes happen. So I, I, I this is going to change once we see what the adjustment they may go with. That's but right. I, I, I think the strategy is you're going to take an, a warship that's going to have a higher cargo than your Voyager. 
and then you'll send in the Voyager when at least it, it's at least above 200k max cargo using your max cargo crew. Because again, no mining speed crew is going to matter. You're getting 700,000 bonus mining speed. Right, so, so max cargo, absolutely. Max cargo all the way. You're going to go in there, you're just going to mine rare. You're not going to mine common. You're not going to hit hostiles. You're just going to mine rare with that Voyager. Get out of there in an hour or two and walk away with all of the rare that you'll need for that next week's pull. So, and keep, and yeah. you can do this like while grinding with your other ship in the same system. If you can manage to get enough cells to, to feed that. Uh, but I you, highly recommend well, you multi-pull the, the refinery option say, that gives you these cells. Oh yeah, as best you can, but the biotoxins are tough. Um, as a matter of fact, I could go try to get some more today. Let's go back and see what... I still don't know that I'm going to be able to triple pull that thing. Mine will finish cooling down tomorrow. I'm currently holding 10,000, but I just pulled, just now, I pulled three more um, three more boosts. So the question becomes, can I get 5,000 in three? Actually, I bet I can. I bet I can because we did, we did that yesterday, didn't we? You know what? When I'm done with these Herogen, let's go. Let's go pop a couple. Let's see what we can do. I might even try to. Let's see. Let's go back to those bio ships. Where did I put them? Is this the one where it's the three systems that have the ideal ones that you want to go for? No. Just... No. no that's, th that's the stage before that. Okay. Um. Let's call it Roamers and Hunters is the difference. Yeah. So roamers are in the lock systems. The hunters are the are the bounty hunters, is what you're calling them, right? You trigger, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not going to be able to do the 43s. I'm going to be stuck at the 40s because I don't have the warp range to go to 285. So yeah, I'm going to be stuck with the ones that I did yesterday. To answer some questions in chat, uh, yes, this includes the Voyager cargo research. And that is ops locked at every single level. There's different ops locks. That's kind of why I did the ops ranges with those tiers. Yep. Um, Looking and back, Jazzmeister, the link for this spreadsheet, I bet you was already in the graphics room on DJ's Discord. Was this from, is it in the same spreadsheet? Yep. yep. I, it's under Voyager Warp range and cargo. Let's see. You know what? I've got it buried in here. Let me Let me pop it back down to the bottom. Yeah, I'll put a link for it, too, in the Twitch chat. Oh, okay. Yep, there it is, and I'm going to... Slow, Jules. Too slow. That's so true. I'd, I'd recommend if anyone wants to at this moment, make your own copy, because by playing with these options, everyone else has the access to play with these options. Um, actually, no, because everyone's a viewer. Except for, I think you, are you not a, you're not I a am an editor, but I'm going to make a copy anyway. Uh, it, copy of Voyager Refinery. I there swear we, I'm an adult, but this link has the word poop in it. Yes, I saw it. Oh, it just disappeared. I did. I saw the word poop. I saw it in there. All right, so here is, uh, here's what we're looking at. Let's go to this table. Here's, uh, here's what he did down here. If you'd look at the bottom of your screen or the bottom of the uh, spreadsheet, Voyager, Warp, and Cargo. And you can come over here, put in your bonuses, put in your officers, and it's going to calculate over here. So if I go with a captain of 2 and 4 of 11, who in my case is Tier 4, um, and I could put Mavery here. Then, oh, wait. No, I don't want to do that. We'll do 2 of 11, 4 of 11, and Staunt, right? That's what we would do? Yeah, but you're going to you need to change the captain. Yeah, oh, you're doing 2 of 11. Yeah, you're doing great. Mavery will get you a little bit more cargo, even though you don't have synergy. Well, I could have synergy, right? Doesn't Grush give well, me synergy? No, but you don't need to use Grush because you're using max cargo. Is that what you're looking for? Oh, okay. All right, so Mavery, 4 of 11, and Staunt. Lawn below deck, which my lawn is tier four. Uh, Stan's tier five, four of 11 tier, and Mavery's only tier one. Okay. 
Ops level, good. Syndicate level, that's correct. Treasury, actually, I don't think my treasury is that high. Let's check out the treasury. I think mine's 52. So let's drop that down one to, there we go. Um, and then those two researches are in the new tree. Oh, I don't have any of those then. Wait, no, that's not true. I think I did do one or two of them the other night, didn't I? For your cargo research, you probably have one. Let me finish repairing my defense platforms that Wardod destroyed. I just cleaned up in here, too. Makes a big old mess. Slinging his big old ship around everywhere. All right. So, yeah, these are all the way down here. Hull capacity and, and Voyager cargo. So I've got one on both of them. And I do not have the proton projectile. I don't, projectile, I don't think. Double check. I might. Doubt it. All right. Projectiles. What was it called? The anti-proton yeah, I don't have that one. The anti-proton disruptor that increases cargo capacity by 30% of base. Probably should be, uh, honestly, that's probably one I should look at, but I don't have that one, so we'll leave that off. All right, so that means for me, my max cargo at Tier 3 would be 155,000, right? Is this the chart that updates? Nope. No. No, no. So you go to your Voyager tier. You still have it at Tier 12. Oh, mine's Tier 2. So you could have the option 000. to add extra comps or any like variable things like that. That's a great thing that I am going to add right now. Ooh, exos. All right, so yeah, so let's look at what it would go to tier three. See, at tier three, mine would go to 132,000. Uh, oh, wait, no, do no. Oh, gosh. Wait a second. Oh, man, so I got to do tier three plus the cargo. Uh, plus the cargo component. So it'd be 132,540, but that is enough to do a single pull. Now, if I can get enough of those cells to get in there a couple of times a week, yeah, I see what you're saying, Jules. With the seven-day cooldown, you'd only need to do, what is that? I would need to do four cells in a week. So that would Especially be... if you're getting extra cells, because right now your max is one cell a day, and you do not really want to be wasting that on your rare. So they're going to be super expensive to double pull. But if you can, like, especially tier four, tier five, when it starts, you get that cargo sweet spot, it's definitely be worth it to just mine the rare so that you can start really reaping the rewards now, out when, of that. When you say refinery. one a day, how what are you basing that on? Because we can do three of the bio ships. Yeah, so you can do a triple pull of the Species A472 loot exchange, right? Every three days, and you get three warp cells. So you technically get one a day oh, if you're triple pulling. I, I got you. So I you get you. maximum one a day. Yeah, okay, I got you. So at one a day, if you used four of them to mine the rare, then the other two you could come in and grind. Is that what you're thinking, Blue? Yeah, well, at least until you hit, uh, do you mine about, let's see, 500,000 of the anomaly samples, and then you get another 10. Well, even at tier four, it would jump up to 190. But do we know what that chest cost changes to? We uh, do if you go over to the refinery tab. Yep, here we go. Okay, so the rare anomaly sample, it would increase. Oh, gosh. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, yeah. It's starting to get ridiculous. Well, then you can't go to Tier 4. You got to stay at Tier 3. You can't go to Tier 4. At Tier 3, the double pull is 600,000, but I could pull, but I can only earn 132,000, so that's five visits out of my six that I get. But look what happens to it at Tier 4. It jumps to 1.8 million. This just this reminds me a lot of the Mantis. Like this whole thing is engineered around the same trajectory around the Mantis, where you couldn't use the max 
the Mantis at Max Cargo to maximize your refineries. You had to make a choice of what you wanted. So the Voyager's got to stay at Tier 3 for now. For now. All right, you hear that, people? No, we're talking think, about we're talking about mining Cruzito. We're talking about mining the nodes with Voyager's cargo. And this is what game design actually built and designed. Now, now I will say, as we discussed, Jules, I think it's highly likely that they're gonna make a cargo adjustment. I think it's highly likely they're gonna make a cargo adjustment. But this data actually makes it even better. Like, yo, scopes! At tier four, with everything maxed, 189,000, and you're going to ask me for 1.8 million? I mean, come on. Come on. Now, Cruzito, here's the thing. You can grind, but but if you grind, you're going to get a, a large amount of common that's going to fill up your cargo. So what are you going to grind with? The Vidar isn't going to do it. You're going to need a warship, and a warship isn't going to have 1.8 million in cargo. Yeah, that's terrible. That's just bad. I'm going to I'm going to use this. Say, sorry. I'm going to use this when I talk to them about cargo next. Here's why. Like today, I was just saying it's not good, but now I got evidence. No, Cruzito, the tally won't do it. Even even. Uh, we had we had G5 players using tier 11 and tier 12 tallies that were sometimes dying. They they might kill a couple of them here and there. One uh, thing about tier uh, tier five uh, past the tier four point is that at tier five the Fisha exchange uh, like triples. All right, let's go back and take a look at that. So these are. Still in the refinery, it's just up to the right. Yep, here we go. So the commerce exchanges. Um, Frank A goes up big at tier five too. If Fish is big at tier five, and even Cerritos is big at tier five. As far as parts go. Man, see that now that is a little bit more tempting but not while the refinery costs or at tier five, it's 2.2 million. So let's look at the cargo at tier five, 250,000, 10 cells, Jules, 10. You know what? I think it's obvious and clear that they did not intend for us to do double chess right now. Like that's super obvious. Maybe ever. No, not ever, because you know what they're going to do. Prime Voyager Cargo. Oh, gosh, he said it. You know what's coming. Yeah, Wolfwood, you got it. How about Prime Everything Cargo? That's true. Wrathbond, you know what? You're absolutely right. I'm an idiot. I am only assuming that my research down here is only at Tier 1, but... If I took it up to, say, level four. Yeah, but look there. Even at four, it's only 300,000. Tier seven, 357. Tier 10, it's only 400,000. And at the, that point, you can't hit that because that's an Ops 55 requirement or re research development. All right. So, uh, so, oh, okay. I see that right here. So, tier nine is as high as I could go as a 53 so let's just see how big i could get the other one so i could go to level nine on both it's still only four hundred ten thousand at tier five as compared to the 1.8 that's uh the 2.2 that's needed and by the way when you build your corvus and you start using that that's the same cargo you'll have but so but like that's, that's that's the break even point for you you'll be using your voyager to mine the rare you'll be using the corvus to hit the hostiles to, to hit get the, the common uh, yeah and, and, a, stuff. and a little dabble of extra rare yeah and, and extra exotic biotoxins toxins because i think that's actually what i'm seeing now is that's my biggest trick point i don't have enough deuterium to summon enough hostiles to get enough loot to do 
everything I need to do for that that whole so loop. So hitting some of those hostels for that extra little trickle of biotoxins is important. Uh, At least to me. Uh, there's a there's an unfortunate solution for that. That is the the 35s versus the 40s when you're grinding the roamers, and that's just because of the ratios of the loot. It just gives out less anomaly samples to dilute your full hull, and you have a lot more time to collect those biotoxins. Yeah. But you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It took me 250 hostels on one cell. I don't want to do that anymore. Oh, it's miserable. Yeah. So, but you know what? Bubba was mentioning this earlier, Jules. You do a little bit of tinkering with the base cargo of Voyager. This loop, while complicated, is actually not that bad. But you've got to make you've got to make this refinery a little bit more attainable, especially since you're only getting, like you say, on average, one cell a day. And that's if you're triple pulling that biotoxin chest. A lot of people can't do that yet. You know? It really depends on what level of bio ship that you're able to hit. And those bio ships can be challenging. And what happens if somebody snipes one from you? You know? And when I'm talking about the bio ships, I'm talking about these right here where you can get to... Um, yeah, I mean, people are going to be maxed. Most people are going to be maxed at, like, 39 and 40. Look here. I didn't even notice this. The level 39 has a higher warp range than the level 41 does. Yeah, go to the system chart. The warp range does some wonky stuff between different levels. Yeah. That is odd. Voyager warp ranges. So that's up here. Voyager warp range, which we were talking about. The first tab is 8472 yeah, yeah. systems. There we go. Man, this chart has so much. Uh, Ran Susie, I didn't pull the four hour because I won't be up at 3.30 and I like to pull that right at midnight. So I'll pull it in 44 minutes. Darthanakin, yes, there is a little bit of a bonus of 10 cells in field training. But to do that, you have to mine 500,000 uh, anomaly samples. And... By the way, I discovered this today. Why is that tooltip not working? It's not working on PC, but it works on mobile. By the way, click that little info button. It tells you you have to mine it with Voyager. It won't even work on a normal on a normal ship there, Jules. It has to be uh, it has to be with Voyager. And that's so a you can do it to Voyager, all it's gonna cost is ten cells. Exactly, which is ironic that that's what they're giving back. To answer Wolfwood in the chat, I think that right now people should be hitting the hostels and not worrying about the rare because the common anomaly chest is giving you a ton of ship parts, gives yeah. you the options for a max pull, and in fact, I actually got a max pull. I've been able to pull that three three times. Technically, I got like 10 pulls yeah, out of that so... uh, common anomaly sample exchange, and I got a max uncommon. Artifact people in chat areas. are saying you can mine that Take with the, the other, other ships. Oh, really? That's what they're saying. I've seen three reports of it. Yeah, I mean, you can mine okay. the common anomaly with the other ships. The rare anomaly is actually like a tenth no, for the, the mining rate. No, that, so um, so are you guys getting credit in field training? Because I've been told that it's not counting. If you guys are getting points with it, then... Oh, Black Sheep says his is already done. Okay, well, good. Then disregard what I said. So now what are you saying, Jules, here, is that the Uncommon Refinery can has a chance at 5, 6, 8, or 30? That's the uh Yeah, the, the so grand... it gives you a full pull. It's, it's a really rare chance that you'll get a full pull. But, I mean, your rare anomaly sample exchange doesn't give you a full pull. Yeah. So I, I see way more value in trying to triple pull my common anomaly sample exchange Agreed. than even worrying that much about the rare. Now, the research credits are highly important. So if you can single chest that rare when you can, when it comes up, great. But yeah. I'm not concerned about that at this moment, especially, too, because the other output of that is the commerce insignia. Yeah, unfortunately, I, uh, I am 112,000 short. And I've got to wait, you know, I guess... What was my cooldown? I think tomorrow I can get back in. 
Yeah, so tomorrow night I'll be able to get back in with three more cells. And and honestly, with those three cells, gosh, what do you think? Right now, while Voyager is tier two, should probably just grind, right? Not I mean, mind with it until day, it's tier three? A day two or day three of this arc, I just did a couple pylum trips. I got 1.2 million, and my max pulls are 190,000, so I got... Quite a few, I got weeks. Of the uncommon. Yeah. But we're talking about, Which I, is there like, a way for me to get uh, enough for a rare? I do agree. I do agree. Uh, so you're thinking grinding here, even for the first couple. Wait yeah. until the we can get... Finicky. Wait until we can get tier three on Voyager before, uh, before we go mine. Is that kind of what you're thinking there, Jules? Maybe that, but also, I mean, if you can actually mine the 500,000... And get those ten extra cells. Maybe that jump starts some of your progression. It's true. It's gonna need a juicy miner. Otherwise, it's a long trip. Oof. We've yeah. had a Nova in one system since this loop began, and it's wow. still there. <laughs> and token system is protected in our server, so we can't even hit it if it goes over Gargo. Yeah. Oh. Black sheep. Yeah, but aren't there? Our... ship. There's only a couple of nodes, isn't there? Yeah, and everyone's reporting that they're flipping as well. Yeah. So they, well, they told me that they would flip. They did tell me yeah. that they were flippers. So persons that you're just going there to mine rare, you may have to mine a little bit of common just to flip a node. Yeah. Or uh, just hunt OPC and destroy your row. Black Sheep says they disappear when they're drained. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're an immediate flipper, but I, I think it's kind of like Latinum uh, and the super nodes, right? Like, they'll spawn back up at some point. Yeah, they flip and move. They moving and a shaking. They're flipping and jiving. Yeah, baby. Well, Get Trader. For Raria action. Trader, let me ask you. Um, you've been watching all the content you've seen a lot happen in the last 72 hours now i have what do you think about voyager as somebody who has been looking for a reason to come back to the game is this it no even the isolated damage that Catherine uh, that Catherine janeway offers i mean it's interesting but it isn't like the whole the whole loop is the Vidar loop. The whole loop is the Talios loop. The whole loop is the Stella loop. It's just repeated again and again ad nauseum. The ship is different, the abilities are different, but it's not anything new. I kind of feel like this loop may be mechanically, that's not correct, not mechanically. Um, it might be the most convoluted loop in the entire game. More than Stella. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm listening to you guys talk about it. It's like, why? Why? And more why? It is probably it is the, the most... Same thing, though. For the isolytic damage, it's all about the spice. For the spice. 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 3M says, looking at field training milestones for Voyager... Jules, how long, with perfect efficiency, would it take to earn 100,000 commerce tokens? I was just about to calculate that. That's Assume. not right. Dude, some people, my, my math. 700 days? That's oh, not right. Dude, my Ooh. math said 1,000 days, so yours is already better than mine. I'm sorry. But now again, let me listen. Steven Aaron has taught me enough, has taught me enough to say, okay, like, obviously, they've got other plans for commerce insignias because there's no way it could take a thousand days. You know what I I'm saying? For sure, there's math. a way it can take a thousand days. I never do math past six months. It's just, it's pointless. I agree. Too many things change. I don't think it's going to be a thousand days. That's what the math says here, but it'll change. Well, it's a thousand days if you're just doing the A472 species loot exchange. If you add in the stuff you can get from the rare anomaly 
sample exchange, it cuts it down by 300 days. So 700 days. I still don't think it'll gonna take 700 days. I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be 700 days. Can, can we talk about the commerce extending stuff a little bit? Yeah, please. Because this is something that Bubba Joe and I actually got in a little discussion about this in the lab. And I really see this as an end game. You can end a grind in a different one of these loops. For instance, if you're just mining Sealat to upgrade a Fisha, you're done because the Commerce Insignia is going to give you more parts than your Fisha refinery. And it gives you lap. If you're out there with your Frank A trying to grind parts, you're done because the Commerce Exchange here, even a Tier 1 Voyager, is giving you a ton of parts. The Amalgam, if you're still trying to work on the Amalgam, oh god, that Amalgam refinery is terrible. And I know the grind isn't a lot, but do you really want to speed up that Amalgam? This Amalgam Commerce, Commerce Exchange is amazing. And then the Cerritos, if you just hate Cerritos Wednesdays, or you're not on it very often for Cerritos Wednesdays, and you can't pull that, um, or you just want to speed up your Cerritos, and you don't have to, you're not worrying about that grind. So this, the Commerce Exchanges are really interesting as a way to end a different grind. See, now, I think he that is, is I think that's a very subtle beauty. Now, thankfully, I'm almost done with my amalgam. I am less than 40,000 parts away from being done. So that one, I'm done. But you know what? I do want a tier 12 Cerritos. I am pushing. I I'll do anything to speed up the progression of my Cerritos here a little bit. So... You know, once I get my, my Voyager to an appropriate tier, yeah, I'll look at those Commerce Insignias for Voyager parts. Uh, so, uh, well, sorry, for Cerritos I, parts. Can I ask you if any of the other Commerce Exchanges look good to you at all? You know, I I didn't really go through them as much. Mine are Tier 2, so... Well, I, it doesn't matter. It Would any of the stuff that would be in those Commerce look good to you? Like, would you ever pull, not you know, for the, the normal, ship parts? Not for the normal ship parts, no. I can see the specialty ships being good for players and and like you say kind of ending a loop that's that is something subtle that they probably needed to celebrate a little bit louder but guys you know like even the other day Jules on the podcast people were really fussy oh well you know even Ripper said you know they just reduced grind with freebooters then they add it all back but we're not looking at the broader picture here you know there's two problems with that one Yes, we have said there's too much grind, but they can't just not introduce new content. So when they reduce something, they're going to add something back in its place, A. But B, if that new mechanic also has some kind of a speed up or a quote-unquote end to the progression, which this kind of does, you know, it's, it's going to help me finish my amalgam potentially if i don't finish it by myself first but it will speed up my acquisition of cerritos and the cerritos is very important to me so i think that is a positive piece of this as well granted again still very convoluted loop but the end game of this loop the outcome i think is is good you know what i'm saying like i think the reward or or what we're getting as a result of engaging in this loop, I do think that it is probably a good thing. But it is very complicated. It is so complicated. So, but just, just personally, dying. you as a player, will you pull the Amalgam? Will you pull any of the other ones? Or are you just going to do Cerritos? Because if you're just going to do one of them, you get one pull of day and it has a 24-hour cooldown. Why not start now? Well... I could, but yeah, Cerritos. So, Wardot's chased me. I need thirty seconds, and then and then I'll look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm I'm holding I'm holding like fifty thousand over cargo, forty thousand over cargo of of Herogen relics. So let me just get this home real quick, and then I'll look at the chart. <laughs> yeah. It's it's also not just the Cerritos parts. It's also the particles for the research as well. So it will help you speed up your research. Well, now my Cerritos research is pretty much tapped for now, but yeah, that's why but I for want the majority of players they're not there. Well, not only that, but that's why I want tier twelve because there's more research that opens there. 
you know? So let's come back and take a look at the uh, at the refinery here, and let's scroll over and take a look at the Cerritos refinery. Let me just blow this up. So here's the Cerritos refinery at Cerritos Park. So I'm tier two. How many of these commerces am I or, or earning in a day? It's going to average out to 100. You get one chest pull a day, and it costs 100. You'll get 100 a day, so you basically get to pull one of these commerce exchanges every single day. So I might as well go ahead and start is what you're saying. If, you if you're never going to use anything else, then there's no point in waiting. But if you're going to pull, like, for instance, you're going to pull the Amalgam and the Cerritos, maybe wait till the contents of those get better, and then you can start double pulling going through your stockpile. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, and for other people, like if if G5 parts are still a choke point for you, or G4 parts are still a choke point, maybe wait until you get to those those higher tiers. Tier five, I think, is when we start. I absolutely want the contents of these chests. I just figured I'm Sorry, not man. I'm in no particular rush right now, so I can like and the way the Voyager's going, like okay, this thing's gonna get tiered up pretty quickly because it's the arc. Well, I also think you know what. I, I was actually just now noticing this. Maybe I should wait a little bit because there are, aside from just the amalgam parts, the gotcha. shipskin shard trackers are probably still of some value to a lot of players. The shipskin yeah. shard trackers are what you're you're kind of earning for. Um, I'm in the wrong section. Where is it? You know, they're they're making a really good point in the chat right now that. In order to finish the field training, you actually need to redeem them, not just earn them. Yes. So you may just want to start pulling just right. so that you can yeah. get that counter going down. And the amalgam doesn't pay. matter though, because you can multi-pull based off of like doing multiple ships. But if you don't, if you don't want any of their loops, then maybe just well, start now. If you don't now. want all those loops, then you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Where is somebody help me? I haven't been in the ship skin shard trackers. Where do I redeem those? I haven't been in that. So, uh, the I amalgam the refinery. refinery. Oh, in the refinery. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, in the amalgam, yeah. All right. So, let's see. What do we got in here that I can buy? Is there anything there you want? That's what I'm looking. Plasma blast, critical damage by 5%. Oh, my God. See, there's oh, reasons that I never useful. did any of this stuff. Uh, oh, that was critical damage. All right. Uh, if, you can, if you can get them faster and for nothing, you know, it's not going to hurt getting them when you're, you're not having to pay for them. Yeah, yeah, that's that, and that's what I'm saying. Like, some of these, some of these are going to speed up because of that. You know, so I maybe I was I I might have been premature on judging the amalgam one, even though my amalgam's about to be maxed. I might use it just to farm the trackers. And actually, remember but, that that. 5% damage or whatever will also influence your isolytic damage now too. Yeah. But for everyone, like, at certain ops levels, it's just like, congratulations, here's your free refit after you don't need it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I, maybe sometime, and I'm not optimistic about this, maybe they'll add more to it. But you know what? Look here. Well, for I'm now, appar I've apparently been... Think I've apparently been accumulating these for a while. I've got enough to unlock like three projectiles right now. Yeah. No. But, but when you yeah. see that this comes out at Ops 35, some of those um, skin trackers, if they speed up for those players that are going to be in those late 30s now, they can be useful for their uh, G3 epics and things like that. Yeah, I agree. Even the, even the ship skins for the G3 epics provide utility, you know? And the so jelly skin and... Things like that. And there's cloaks in there. The amalgam cloak yeah. is valuable. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's things in there. Um, hang on one second, Preacher. I'm going to come back and get your question here in a second. I just wanted to check something. I was wondering. I thought I already had the amalgam cloak. I do. So why is it showing up in there still? Did you see that? You can buy some more. What? That is. That should Don't you want a second there. amalgam cloak? <laughs> should Just not be there. Could. That's actually broken. That's not supposed to be there. Neither is the jelly refit. This is I've content got the they don't frequently look at. You can't. You can't convince me of that. 
Yeah, I don't think they're linking to to check if you've already got it or not. Yeah, clearly not. Sort of like the Cloak Racketeer token in every event store. I really wish that I still flew my auger any at all, because I wanted this skin so bad, and I never earned it. <sighs> yeah, I had it. I liked it. I still fly my auger now and then. I never fly. Relive the good old days. I know. I, <laughs> I mean, even the D4 refit, all three of these refits were so beautiful. They really mm. were beautiful refits. Uh, I, I, I get, I, I'll still get the refit for the fact that it looks cool. Well, you can yeah, and, then when I, and then when I do pull it out... <laughs> Yo, what's up, yeah. Mean Bean? I was just talking about you a little bit ago. Think of it like Can't an you... artifact. Put it on the shelf to look at. <laughs> Can't you use it on the uh, Tribune? No. Not, not the Auger one. No, this I mean, Tribune just, has its yes, own. Just for the Auger. Not that one in particular, but... Well, that's the only one. Yeah, there are others, but they're not available for grinding in here. Uh, what's up, Mean Bean? I was just talking about you a little bit ago, like 10, 15 minutes ago, I was talking about you. You were my brave soul that went up there and uh, tested the uh, the Borg data cube. So appreciate you. Uh, welcome to the Twitch channel. Appreciate you being here. Welcome, Carago, Panther. Thank you guys very much for joining. Shattered Fox, thank you for your hydrate first squad. Thank you for your hydrate. Casey Jones with the 14-month resub. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome sauce. Um, all right. Speaking so, of data cube, I've been sitting in that system ever since we talked about it. Still is it, not proc. Yeah, it's you might be there for a minute. All right, uh, crew. We've got questions in the chat, Blue. Time to break out Blue's crews. Time to break out some I Blue's crews. Newfie Preacher says, what is the best... Species 8472 crew. All right. So we're going for maximum damage, right? I am going to... Let me see if I get... If I can accurately predict what Blue's going to say. For Species 8472, which are interceptors, I'm going to say 5, Kang, and either Gorkon or Lorca. That's correct. Yeah! There you go. And as a matter of fact, we're going to... Uh, we're going to do one of those now. So where is and, this ship uh, sitting? Sure, yeah. Now, you know, that crew is half, is, you know, it's important that your what's going on below your deck is also just as important. Well, unfortunately, I am not going to use, Voyager? I wasn't going to use Voyager. No, no, no I'm not using Voyager. I mean, you got to have you. Yeah, I'm going to, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to take it with my pylum. Uh, actually, what? you know what? Hang on a second. Hang on a second. You know what? Science, right? Science. Let's do it with this. Let's do it with Voyager. Can you increase your warp range at all? Because I bet you, you can kill a 47. Uh, well, we'll see. My warp range is four. Oh yeah. I'm a, it's 443. So I can get to, I can get all the way up to the 53s if I wanted to. Uh, Jules, is it the same crew for that one? Using the Voyager, hitting as high as you can? No, 50s, yeah. I could get to the 50s. Oh yeah. I would, I would target the 47s. I died on the 50s and I was lucky enough that by the time I, my Voyager got back out there, it was still there for me to finish it off. So yeah, we've got we've got, got 43, example, we've got 40, 43, and 47, and then 50. So let's try the 47. Oh, and bring a cleanup ship. Absolutely. He can't. Like have the have the pilot. Uh, no, to clean up. no I, I don't have warp 345 on any ship. Get your disco as close as possible so you can try to disco back. All right. Build a second Voyager. <laughs> you know, I was wondering. I technically can, because Scopely gave me one, so I could still buy one. <laughs> I could still go and I think I could still do that. All right. Uh, listen, yeah, for science, we're going to take a Tier 2 Voyager. But now I've got all my upgrades done except for the warp drive. So all my combat. So for all intents and purposes, it is kind of a Tier 3 minus the hull health that I would get by tiering it. So Not sharp, right? Um, 
Yes, thank you. I need to switch that out for Kang. Below deck. Oh, boy. All right, well, we can drop Mariner. So let's throw Hugh. And, you know, gosh, I hate to drop the Doctor, but I need some stats here. Maybe Odo? Or you, attack, I guess. You can put an officer in the great out slots. I thought it wasn't impacting stats, though. It, yeah, you know, it won't impact 5 of 11, but it will impact your ship ability, your ship ah, stats. Ah, okay. Which one? Uh, okay. I thought they patched which, that. Which that one? Did they not? Last time I checked was two months ago, so unless uh, they patched it since then. I thought they patched that, but we'll find out because we actually can tell uh, by looking at a battle log. So. I have to agree with the chat. I think uh, for Taurus, I think the call out for her should be BLT. Oh, yeah. Uh, but even in the great slots, guys, the stats may count. We don't know that yet, but the abilities definitely don't. Yeah, All abilities, right. and if your officer needs those stats, it's not going to use them. Yeah, so it, it only pertains to the ship. So I've only got two, and I think I want loot, and I definitely need Hugh. And besides, I don't need BLT because I got Gorkon. And Hugh is going to continue to proc Gorkon, so I don't need... See, again, when the ship hits the opponent with a critical, I've got a 90% chance of hull breach for three rounds. So... Yeah, I'm gonna be fine. I have to I have to finish it by round seven anyway, or I'm toast. So yeah, I don't need BLT in this case. Odo would be somebody I could I could think about doing, but I need another ship slot first. Um Alright. Here we go. Tier two Voyager. We're gonna fly it into space. And we're going to head up to the 47 system. Is that what we said? The 47 is in warp 345. That would be either of these two systems. So let's go to Zevritus. And as far as I can get, my disco is actually still going to be a four-minute warp. So if I die, I die it is what it is. We're going to give it a shot. While we're waiting for that to happen... Uh, I'll look through the chat and see. Yeah, Snipes, I'm pretty sure. I thought they fixed that a while back. I really do. But we'll try. So my uh, a Tier 7 Valdor is a 50 warp speed. And my Tier 2 Voyager is 62. Oh, yeah. Well, no, that was one of the things that they pitched uh, to us was that it had the fastest warp speed in the game and would have impulse speed rivaling that of the Vidar. So, uh, yeah, Viger uh, Scopely, the range. Scopely knows about that that Doc A, and the they they know what's going on. I, I, well, they they've acknowledged the bug. I don't know if they actually know what's going on, but they've acknowledged the bug. So, good bug or bad bug? Uh, no, it's not a good bug. It's annoying as hell. Oh, the blow deck thing. That was a good bug. No, no, no. We're talking about like how it's disabling your ship. Like, it'll just randomly be locked in another system. It's weird. So definitely a bad book. Oh, uh, yeah. It it, tie, it ties up a, a slot. Messes me up. Messes me up badness. Badness. It's very annoying. I, I agree. Is it... Like, is it recent? Yeah. Yeah. It just started I this week. I experienced it. Um, Trader, I got another question for you. The isolytic damage... Do you feel like that, aside from the time of this loop, right? The loop is convoluted. But how do you feel about isolytic damage as a whole? Like, is that a draw for you, like, in PvP and things like that? Um, I mean, it, I suppose. It's just how much you got to spend to get it to a point that it's actually useful in PvP. I mean, that's how I look at it. It's like, it, it might be useful, but is it going to cost me 10 grand to get it to the point that it's actually useful for me? Well, that might depend, right? Like, I think it depends on 
on your opponent and whether or not they've done it. Because, you know, even a 2 or 3% net damage increase is a lot in PvP. Especially if they're on not... My, on my server, I can count on my opponent having done it. All of it. So that's not really are a these, question in my mind. Are these available for direct sale or only through the loop? It's only through the loop, right? They're not selling these, are they? Not yet. Yeah. I don't true. think. Not yet. I mean, you and I both. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, if probably. If it can be monetized, it will be monetized. So, Anan Games, that's why I decided to swap out my pylum. And I'm actually going to do this with Voyager. All right, we're going we're gonna to test. He says, can you give advice for what people without the G4 rares and above should be doing on the Voyager loop? That's actually what I'm doing right here. I'm going to show you that a Tier 2 Voyager is pretty capable. Um, I don't think that the Voyager is what I would use in the Cell Lock Systems Blue, like what we were talking about earlier. Probably not what I would use there. But for these bio ships, I think it's very capable. And for the Herogen Hostiles, I think it's very capable. Oh, when, when jump starting a loop, a loop like this, uh, cargo haul is king, and so that's that's not the ship for. But it. see, I'm not going for cargo right now. I'm just going for no, the no, not, not the for what you're doing, but for the token system. Yes, agreed for the token system. But uh, Anan, I think you know if you don't have a G4 or rare or above, honestly, a tier one, tier two Voyager is pretty capable. All right, now yeah, Wolf has got a high, Wolf has got a good point that your research is is going to be affecting here. We've True. heard from some other people that enterprises are dying on those A four seven two in the level thirty six system. So yes. even there, you may be better off with the Voyager, even though it has a smaller crew or That's, some smaller cargo. Exactly, Chris is right. If you're under forty six, Voyager is pretty much your only option right now. Um, because even in the level thirty five system, as as Jules just pointed out. Enterprises are dying. Now, the pylon would probably be okay there, but Voyager is capable, and it is serving G3 and low G4 players. So, you know, while we like to complain about things like that sometimes, I know this is going to sound crazy. Somebody's going to get ready to clip it, but Voyager is an out-of-the-box useful ship for players in the low to mid target range of this content voyager is capable and i think that is in warp range alone yeah i think it's very very capable by the way griffin were you here earlier for the big announcement hey griffin were you here for the big announcement earlier um pallium thank you for your hydrate appreciate that i'm actually very thirsty i'm going to do that now griffin on your server uh, I don't know. Is Griffin on my server? Yeah, Griffin's on my server. Why but are you I'm telling it? Oh. No, I have, to be, I have to tell him because he was the one that predicted it. Griffin, I have received confirmation from Scopely Game Design that Epic Captain Catherine Janeway and her officer ability that has been so contentiously debated is indeed now confirmed as an additive ability. So the auction prices are going to be stupid for anybody who actually knows. But there you go. Yes, pierced one. I had to tell Griffin. Griffin's the one who made me the bet. Griffin bet me a case of Coors Light. <laughs> oh. So there you go. All right. Well, oh, no. No, Wardod. You get out. Do not snipe my hostel. Wardod's going to try to snipe my hostel. Look at it. He just flew in here. All right, I'm going to do it now. Plus the freighter. All right, I got that one. I killed it. And it took about... Oh, I missed the freighter. 
That's... <laughs> I missed the freighter. Now, could I have killed that? I probably could have, right? So now, what did he get from that freighter? I think you could have. Wardon, what did you get from the freighter? Freighters give eight times the loot of the same level Herojin oh, Hunter Elite. It's just so one it, ton of loot. So it would have been about 4,000 Herojin Relics. Now, I really hate to shoot myself in the foot like this, but, you know, these are probably not very frequently visited systems at the moment. Well, so a little Wardot... sweet through with your Voyager might be lucrative. Wardot is watching me. Are you telling We're him to snipe streamers. other people's hostels? I'm talking about sweet for miners. Oh, right, right. Definitely would ever snipe other. All right, we've hostels. got we've got well, six thousand. You. you know what? Oh, look, I'm gonna die on the next one. I gotta go home. I don't think I'd survive another one. I just did two. Let's yeah, go home. It's not it's not worth it. You'd waste deuterium. Yeah. No. Yeah, burning. You are wrong. Just sit down and be wrong. You are wrong. Oh, Griffin, get out of here. <laughs> oh. <sighs> That's funny. Oh my god, you're right. My dailies. I forgot my God, I gotta hurry. Ten minutes, you can do it. Yeah, I gotta go do my freebooters. I forgot all about them. Here, I'm gonna break you know what, while we're doing that, I'll let Voyager fly home. And I got to go do my freebooters. 10-minute warning on your dailies, everybody. 10-minute warning on... Oh, no. I need you. Crap. All right. I'm going to have to summon that guy back. Do you need you? Yeah. I'm, I got to hit the 53s, and I'm only using a G4. Well, you can try it. If no, you fail, I did. You die yeah, no, I, I, I did the other day, and I died. So I know I need you. Oh. <laughs> I, well, that's okay. not entirely true. I was able to kill one hostile. Uh, Master Viper, how much biotoxin did I get off one hostile? Uh, approximately 3,000. So that off of three cells. Three cells per day. And this is a three-day cooldown. So that would be 9,000. One day one. I'll be able to do triples on this moving forward. Dude, that, and that's what I'm saying. Now, listen, I'm not suggesting that everybody could out there and go do a, a 47, but you could probably punch up a little bit. Use the right crew. Let's say... I, I think... All right. Ain't in games. What's your ops? Oh, yeah, dailies, dailies. Okay, yeah, got to gotta summon home. Dailies. I keep getting sidetracked. Why do you guys keep distracting me with chat? Gotta get I think the, pro I like I think the problem, say. we're not going to distract you anymore, but let's just talk about this warp ring problem because you needed 345 to hit the 47s. Three 47s, and you can triple pull. But an op the, the closest something can get to that is ops 47, maybe 46. Okay. So there, you're going to run an issue where somebody who's sub 46 can't get to the ideal hostel to hit for that loot. So Anan is ops 44. Anan, I say you go for the biggest one you can get to. At ops 44, you could potentially, if you have everything, get to a warp 310 system. And if you can get to a warp 310 system, go for the 43s. Go for the 43s in Hyralaw or Zetayik. Zetayik. Or, or maybe take uh, Kang off of your bridge, put Grush on there to see if maybe even without Kang, can you hit the 47s? Well, now, I lost 33% of my hull against the 47. Now, my Voyager's only tier 2, but I did lose 33%. Maybe 40%. Yeah, look look here. Uh, oh, you guys can't see because of the cat. Look, yeah, there you can. Uh, that, yeah, that's probably 30 to 35% right there, man. And your shields are down. What, what, wait, check the battle down. log. How, how, what round were you in? 
So I, I killed it in five. Okay. So you had, some, you had a little wiggle room. Little wiggle room. <laughs> Don't, yeah, let's not distract him anymore. It's not like he has to finish his dailies or anything. Dailies! God bless it! Stop! Okay, <laughs> dailies. Dailies, dailies. All right. Um, I would mock you if I wasn't the same. <laughs> All right, dailies, dailies, dailies. Now, when you died without Hugh, what were you using as your captain? I was still using Pike. I really, it was, it was a mistake Pike. that I didn't send Hugh. I just forgot oh, it. Oh no! If, like, if you went with like Spock and killed like uh, Strange New World Spock with Giorgio and Tau, you could easily pop your daily without Hugh. Oh yeah, see, I keep forgetting that I have Tau. I'm very used to not having him, so I, I keep forgetting well, him. Tau's the penultimate freebooter officer, I feel. Uh, and I certainly can kill, uh, I can kill levels I could not kill before. Tau. That's for sure. Lango says, did you get your artifact today? Did I get an artifact today? Oh, I haven't done my exchange event yet, so I guess I need to do that, huh? The dailies. Dailies. Dailies, 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 dailies. Okay, I want it. Dailies. Got to do the dailies. Can I do my dailies? Man, if someone started a hype train right now, that'd be really distracting. I'd be screwed. <laughs> Thanks for the hype train. Bye. <laughs> no, it's not time yet. It has the cooldown hasn't expired yet, so I'd be I'd be safe for a few more minutes. Unless the game crashes. Then I'd be screwed. Oh, also your Titan. Oh, uh, yep. Ability. Titan. Titan. Yep. 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 One of those. Titan. Where you at? Do your Titan just like mine? I guess I don't need the rare SP, so mine's been sitting at the maximum amount of like, juice. It's popping one a day. When I get when I get up to the top, I'll I'll use a max. How much time I got? Uh, not enough time to do my mantis. Oh well. Oh yeah, no. No, not with the cooldowns. Ten, mi ten minutes is my cutoff for the mantis daily. Yep. All right, we did it. Got one. Or, yeah, never mind. Yeah, I go back to it. Reopen it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I did it, but. Yep, there it no, is. It's completed. It's just the, uh, the. It just completed as you had it open. All right, look at that. Two minutes to spare. Got it in. Got it in. Woo, woo. I got ATS. It's also a reminder to do your dailies. <laughs> do your dailies, people. I'm not going to start that one yet. Is that one impulse speed? Yeah. How good is that ATA? Um, I don't do it all the time, but you know what? I did pull one of my favorite ATAs and was able to pick up a sixty percent building efficiency, which is very, very nice. I like that one. I even spent a little trade XP on that one. Oh, yeah. I already claimed everything. I'm done. I'm done claiming what I'm going to claim. I'm good. I don't claim. I don't claim these right now because I'm grinding. I'm grinding ROM. Actually, that's so I'm grinding fed. I was going single. But then people people were making fun of me, like, oh, you should be dual grinding G5. So now I've got to get my Federation caught up. i got to get my Federation caught up. So I'm only doing Federation right now, but I'm still hitting Klingon. So that way I'm not hurting my Romulan, but my Federation is catching up every single day. And then when they get level, then I'll, uh, I'll start double grinding those again. Sixty more seconds. Just buy a pack. 
I'm not buying a pack. I don't buy well, packs. Admittedly, I did. I did buy a pack to, uh, to build my pylon. The only pack I bought was a rep pack. I actually was thinking about being highly irresponsible here tonight. Guys, I... Oh, yeah, I needed to calculate the, the pr tiered primes. Yeah. I did some shenanigans on Jules' spreadsheet, and I've determined that to enter my jelly loop, I would need to spend $600 on primes. To enter, you said? To... for That's my break-even point where jelly oh. starts to profit i mean i think like almost breaking even is still a win <laughs> almost breaking even no i don't want to cost anything i want to profit off of it yo well, griffin meant, like, thank you for me, dropping a sub in the channel appreciate you for myself what this stands to be is my outlet for auctions that's uh that's one thing of value that it has to me in that in that regard the points i've gotten like you know it just because it could have made a little more profit doesn't necessarily mean it was a loss in the end if i got if i got an officer out of it yeah ran uh not including the 1200 free not including that because that's going to take me a long time and i don't plan on waiting around i plan on building a corvus this weekend and uh i think it would be silly of me to not do what I need to do. Yo, what's up, Damasca? Welcome to Litterbox. How you doing? Um, 600 now or 2,000 later? Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't want to. I mean, no, eight six seven. No, oh, it just turns it on. It will not increase, so don't activate it more than once. There's also the point that I don't. I don't know if you're planning on going to tier twelve with it or just going as high as you can. But you know, it's really towards the later tiers that things get really expensive. So there is a kind of a flexible deadline for all the packs. I know. But I mean, really, any delay is just a waste. True. But you know, who knows? Like next month, they could come out with like another pack that makes the tier prime look small. I don't know. Jules, they're asking about the jelly loop. I don't know. I don't know that we should talk in great detail about the jelly loop. I packs and build up a jelly. That's all I'm going to say. 2023 advice. So, I don't remember if this is mine or not. Yeah. This is mine. No, that's not mine. Is this not the one? Is that the shared one? Where's my copy? Maybe that is mine. I thought, what is this one? Maybe this one's mine. I need to get rid of the one that's not mine. Yeah, this is it. This is it. All right, so let me, let me get rid of the other one. All right, let me trash that one. I don't even know why I have multiples. Because you that. opened it to copy it. Oh. This is all your recent spreadsheets. And by anyone. Alright. So this is all of my research. All of my research, and it does include my projected uh tier six on prime efficient ship parts. And estimated tier eight on prime efficient ship engineering. I do not have Fleet Commander Spock, so that's why I know this one is mine. 
So what I'm looking at here are the ship parts. I can put in parts and get out more. They're both four star. I can put in rare parts and get out more. I can put in ore and get out more. I can put in rare ore and get out more. I can put I can get out epic. Same thing with gas, rare gas, and epic gas. It's completely the same thing with tritanium, to lithium. It is a pure and total profit. But that's what it takes for me to for me to do this. If I change that to seven, then um, my rare ore is no longer a profit. And my rare gas is no longer a profit. So this was the the lowest level that I could do to kind of break even. Uh, or to, to turn a profit. And uh, that's what I need to do. Level 8 on engineering and 6 on the other one. But that jelly loop, what we're talking about is maxing and scrapping jellies for extra G4 rare parts. So I would spend 38000 but then I would get forty five. It's a profit of 7000 Well, you don't get rare parts out of scrapping any G3 ship. So the rare parts are pretty valuable. Where am I getting the blueprints for jellies? Good question. Good question. I am getting them here. In the G3 epic chest. All right. Uh, I can also... Yeah, they're not in my rare. So the G3 epic chest... I think that may be it. There's also the territory service, if you have a three-star territory. Yeah, territory service works as well. And by the way, you don't need, like, a ton of them. But, I mean, if I can scrap a couple, it would be good. And as far as the jelly blueprints that I do have, I've got one jelly already built. And I can build... I am 17 blueprints shy of building two more. So I could have three, and I really haven't farmed it. So, yeah. It's a it's a very, very nice profit on parts and materials. Does it give blueprints back? No, it does not. It does not. So I'd have to earn the blueprints through other means. All right, while we're waiting on uh, that, we're going to go back and while I'm doing my daily, I'm going to go ahead and send this cat back so we can do one more bio ship. I got one more scanning goo thingy. And that will finish up. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, again, oh, I keep forgetting these things. Let me do this real quick. Um, I don't think that that is a horribly, you know, three hostels, Jules. Does that feel overwhelming in one day? I think, like we were talking yesterday, once we get through this initial kind of rush to, to be efficient, I think this loop's going to be very relaxed. I really do. It's complicated, but it's also... If you really segment it out, I don't think it's going to be that bad. You know? Go grind Herogen once a month, twice a month. Then kill three bio ships every single day. That's it. I've often, I've often found that any loop is easy if you just buffer. If you buffer? Just, you know. Build up a stockpile. If you have enough where you can miss a day and still be fine. Yeah. Yeah, so do do grinding once or twice a week, and I mean that's not really different than anything else. I grind mantis once a week. I grind Borg once a week. I grind amalgam once a month. You know, I feel like two or three hostels a day is not killing me with one grind a, with one maybe grind a week or two grinds a month maybe. Stony Dude says, so "Is that calculator me. shared somewhere?" Yes, it is in our. Um, it's in our. It's also in our graphics room. But I will tell you what I'll do. I will tell you what I'll do. I've already I'll, pasted a link, Sam. 
Sh should we make a Discord category for like a library? You know, here's uh, here's what I was gonna do actually. Because uh, you know, I keep forgetting about this, but we have a download section on our website. I keep forgetting about it. Let's just put it up here right now. SDFC tools download. We don't need the big mama calculator anymore. Mining formulas, we'll leave that. The officer tool by Stewie, the battle log parser. Hey, is Stewie watching? I saw him in here earlier. Stewie, does the battle log, um, does this link always go to the new current battle log? I don't remember if I'm supposed to be updating the link or if you gave me a fixed link. I don't remember. Hey, good night, Spectre. Okay, good. So we got Stewie Doo's battle log parser. And you know what? Now, Jules Verne, we're going to do the um, Jules and Blues uh, scrapping calculator. And let's make it a link. Look, I'm doing it for you right now. All right. Where is the public? Where's the public link, Jules, for the scrapping calculator? Let me post it in the lab. Thank you. Thank you. Make a copy link. Yeah. Yes. I want the, yes. I want the make a copy link. There it is. All right. Copy link. Yep. Oh, I like that. I like that. Blues Jules. <laughs> Blues jewels, scrap blues, and I like blues jewels. Um, blues and jewels, scrapping efficiency calculator. All right, there's the URL. Boom, done. That's there. All right, let's add another. Blues. There may be a big update to that recently because Joker actually went through and looked at two star, three star scrapping just for will, fun so once we this... incorporate that in the calculator we may be releasing a 2.0 version but that link will still work i was gonna so say is this a static link, link. Yeah. okay so it's a yeah. static link all uh, right the, the, oh the issue is that you're gonna have to revisit the site and just click the link again to your new copy and then maybe I mean, copy yeah. paste your old levels of efficiency in there all right so blues and and then now we need the um voyager data sheet and oh yeah, right. luck yeah luckily it'll be easy to copy and paste that just that whole column essentially for all your levels you don't have to like worry about that all right do you have the uh do you have the save a sure. copy for voyager uh yeah i can make one yeah if you'll do that that'll be our static public and i'll put it up on the site and you know what can, think, well, because uh, we have, we're still adding a lot to that, so I'd rather let's just do the viewer link for now, and then okay. people can make their own copy. So that's now also in the lab, just right. because that way people can just automatically see as this gets getting updated with new numbers. There you go. All right. So there's that. And, and Jules, I think uh, taking a note from Stewie Do's migration, if there's new efficiencies added to the game. It might be better just to add them. The, um, at the very bottom so they can still copy paste their old stuff yeah i still haven't added this the new scrapping uh, research so i'll put that at the bottom and look there i'll put spox club in there too all right now let me view the page and make sure it looks right see i hate this black background i gotta fix that and my eyes love it though it is true. I know, I know, but it's blue. Now I gotta come down here and make it white. What's wrong with blue? There we go. Lucky there, everybody, on Talking Trek com. Now you have three new links to the scrapping calculator, the Voyager data sheet, and Spox.club. There you go. Oh, hey, yeah, we wanted to check that, didn't we? The grayed out officer thing. All right, so 
There we go. All right, let's come back. So now how we do that, uh, let's go back to this battle log. So is this able to be counted on? The ship bonuses? It does say 500%, doesn't it? Yep. Sure does. So I guess... So tell you, tell you what, take your ship out of dock. So right now it says whole health was 3.15 million. Now take your ship out of dock and take a look at the info. I am out of dock. I'm in space no. at the moment. Well, okay. All right. Well, that was your battle log. So I'm saying take your ship and and now go in your manage tab. It says 3 million. your details. Yep, yeah. It says 3 million. Which means you got an extra 0.15. Yeah, look here. When I'm floating in space, it's showing 500%, 500%, and 350%. Did I put the lower deck back on there? I bet I didn't. I'm such an idiot. I'm so dumb. God. Man, that would have been bad for getting Hugh. <laughs> yeah, because I think you are at 400%, so yeah, you definitely missed something. Yeah. But yeah, that, that is the easiest way to check to see if that grayed out bug still works. And I, I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, well. We, clearly, we, you can also export does. the battle log to get more accurate numbers. Yeah, but I mean, it's clearly working at it. It's clearly working there. Yo, good night, Stewie. Have a good night. So, DJ, uh, there was a, there's been a couple questions in the chat about the isolytic artifact token. Now, I know that that's in the upgrade USS Voyager SLB. Do you know if that's going to be sourced any other way? Wait, which one? You're the talking isolytic about... isolytic artifact token. All right, let me find this. So where is it? Is it in the isolate or is it in the artifacts tab? Yes. Um, actually, no. To my knowledge, uh, and I remember asking about this, right now that is a premium paid currency as of right now. So for the Intrepid Explorer SLB, that is another scoring metric. So that's oh, so you're saying that there may be packs to purchase more? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So there that's will. that's the two ways to do it: is either you pay for the Voyager and rank, or you pay for the packs directly. Correct. Yep. I mean, and this leaderboard only goes five spots deep. I mean, it's definitely that's definitely a spender's leaderboard for an avatar. What my ship is showing destroyed, but it's right here. This is what this is what we were talking about earlier. This bug is terrible. This bug is killing me. And I can't even free it up. It's definitely not dead, is it? No. Then you hit the repair button and now it's magically back in space. This client got so messed up with the latest patch, man. Yeah, you hit repair, then all of a sudden you're good again no that uh that was for the avatar the free the free one is by doing battle pass and by doing the um storyline events which i haven't done gosh i need to do that what is this one today oh good that's an easy one ship xp Sure, I've got something I can spend ship XP on somewhere. I actually don't know what I can spend ship XP on at the moment. Oh, that uses materials. All right, so we'll hold off on that. There we go. Let's uh, let's put it into my next enterprise scrap. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go do my exchange really fast here in a second. 
and we'll go up to the store and look. I don't think it's going to let me claim another one because I already claimed one. Um, the one that Scopely gave me, but so I don't think it's going to let me have another one, but we'll try it anyway. Long story short, when you finish your battle pass today and you finish the storyline mission, then you will finish the unknown quantity event and you'll get this token and then you go up into the event store and you won't see it on my screen, but you will see three artifacts that you can choose, that you can choose from. Read them carefully. Read them carefully, because they do have conditions. My freebooter daily is missing, because I haven't rebooted my client yet. Which one did yeah, I pick? You have the Proton Pistol, you have the Rogen Medical Device, and then the one you chose, which was the... The Catan. Yeah, I went after... I did the one for the Interceptor. I, that was there were two reasons for that. I did the one for the interceptor, but not just because of the pylum, but also because hull breach is the best of the three abilities. So I've got a pylum, I've got hull breach, so that's why I went with the blade of Catan. Uh, Tacon, I'm going to be sorry, using Tal a lot, so I went with the burning one. Yeah. Yep, I can see that. All right, so that's coming home. What I'll do here is I'll change this ship over to a Stellar. And actually, I just scrapped this one, so it's Tier 1. So let me dump some stuff into it real quick, and I'll go earn some XP while I'm doing that. Uh, yeah, Hull Breach is pretty valuable with the isolytic damage because, I mean, again, that's criticals and that Hull Breach, net impact, and yada, yada, yada. Yo, Chief, good job. He just says, I just got my first anomaly pull. What did you get? Did you get something good? Did you get something good, I hope. Jazzmeister, if you bought into the Voyager loop and you're currently doing that now, you'll get at least one of those artifacts. You just can't pick which one you'll get. But you'll get it within the arc. If that helps your decision. What? Which one are you talking about? He was asking if it's worth spending $40 to basically catch up to get one of those free to, to finish that sms and i'm saying that you'll get enough artifact pulls shard pulls through the common anomaly exchange that you'll by the end you're likely to have unlocked one of them for free or through that loop anyways that's so true. is it worth the 40 dollars now to pick which one you want or is it worth the 100 dollars in voyager and just start accruing those artifact shards um I do see your point there, but even if he did buy the points and get it, it would still end up being another level. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a direct, it's, it's a direct level one, and it's it's not just about the unlock. It gets better. So, me personally, if you were willing to spend the twenty bucks, then I think so, because that's a guaranteed unlock, and and then what Jules is saying, everything else you do in the Voyager loop will continue leveling it up. So, yeah, I think it's probably worth it. I just submitted the uh, tier 8 costs for the biomatter exchange. So fun. Those values. Let's just say it'll involve a lot of grinding. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm probably going to stay at, like, tier 3 for a little while. Otherwise, you're going to need to do uh, 35,000 for a single pull. On what? The biomatter exchange on a tier eight Voyager. Oh man, that's a lot. Yeah, but the bigger hostels probably drop more. And it's a tier eight Voyager, yeah, so it's hit hitting. A ceiling? Well, the tier eight Voyager could probably hit pretty daggone high hostels. But I bet, like at the very top, like the level sixty, like I bet that hostile is it insufficient for triple pulls. Probably. For uh, yeah. Max Voyager. Yeah, that's probably not so un unlikely. So by math, they never, yeah. It's odd that they are like, oh, congratulations on finishing it. Here's your punishment. Hey, look, there's another prime. 
that they can sell. What do you know? That's like two different primes that we found tonight that they can sell. How about that? These things sell themselves. Yeah. If it, if it means anything, Savage Darkness, I feel like Tier 3 is probably about where I'm going to hang out. For, for at least a minute. We'll see what happens with the rest of the of the season. I mean, like, the uh, upgrade the Voyager event ends soon anyway, so what's the rush? True that. Update on the data cube. Two hours in, still not spawned. Oh, that sucks. Day 17. My mind Day is 17. Hey, Trader, do you want to put a ship in a token lock system and leave it there for a few days until that hostile happens to show up? Uh, hard pass, thank you. <laughs> it won't That's last very long on my server. <laughs> you could uh, you could read Imzadi again while you're waiting. Uh, also hard pass, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I don't know why you're hating on that book. It's a terrible book. I'm gonna have to go back and read it again. Lord. I'm gonna have to go back and read it again now as an adult. By the way, I I checked and it's still sitting there. <laughs> Nobody's taking it. It's still at the library? Yeah. And it's been there for like a week and a half now. That's awesome. Nobody wants it, it's so bad. It's not that bad. Not that good. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh, good. Mean Bean says that uh, the CMs are looking into the spawn rate for the data cubes. If, uh, Berlin if says... Them and they've been sufficiently decreased. Berlin's asking about the Apex scoring being broken. I'm pretty sure it's fixed. Pretty sure that's fixed. I think it got fixed a, a little bit ago. Oh, look, Savage Darkness says it's fixed. Ransusi says it's not. Not yet? Oh, okay. What? I, I haven't done an Apex all day. What was the problem? The Armadas weren't scoring? Or is it hostels or what? What's actually broken about it? Because I haven't played in it. Correct. That'll do it. You have to spend directives for it to score. Okay. I can do that. Hey, DJs. I'm Yo. calling it. I got to get up uh, early. I have court that's at 8 a.m., so... It's my bedtime. Yeah, I've got to get up early, too. How long have we been on? Oh, man. Two and a half hours. Yep. Time flies yep. when you having fun. And I also know that you telling the community that you got to start wrapping up and it's late means that you're probably going to go for another hour and a half. So I'm not going to go for you. an hour and a half. <laughs> Two <laughs> hours, then. I love you lots. You guys have <laughs> good a night. great night. Good night, trader. Love you. Thank right. All right. So wait, are the hostels scoring? Like, am I going to do my SMS? Let's see. It looks like it's scoring. Is it just Hostiles the Armada? were fine for me. So it's just Armadas the Armada. From the issues that I heard, I recall hearing several. Um, one was only the starter of the Armada was getting any points. However, that was not straight through for everybody. Um, Delays in points were extremely common. Some points not registering at all. Yeah. In other Old words, hitch job of bugs. In other words, a bunch of foobar. Got it. Sounds about right. Buy thirty muds or cons and call your day done. <laughs> For what? The SMS. Oh, for the Armada SMS. Yeah, it looks like my you still got to do your working. grind for your armadas for the BP as well as the Apex. So, 
Still got to do that. Yeah, that's a shame. I'm not starting all those armadas just to... Yeah, never mind. I don't even care. DJs, this will be devastating to your Apex progression. Yeah. I've skipped more of them than I've played in, to be honest with you. Well, Apex is basically done now. I wouldn't mind to have the skin. Yeah, but it's a, it's a competitive market at the moment. It's not that bad. I mean, not for me. Oh, for I, my server, it's like, oh, I'm going to have to put in a whole day for it. Oh, no, I don't have to. I could, I could probably run 10 or 12 armadas and, and place. I mean, I ain't trying to win it. I'm just trying to get some, you know? Yeah, it's a, even then, it's a, it's a harsh cutoff on my server. see how much more I have to go on this. Oh, cool. Client stuck. All right. Oh, there it goes. Oh, my God. I have so many more to go. I hate grinding Apex. I shouldn't I have. I going to say that. The oh, sorry. I was going to say, I, I shouldn't have waited till the end of the day to do all my events. I, I just, I was busy today, and I didn't have a chance to play. Get another Stella. Have more. I've got, I'm faster. grinding with three of them right now. <laughs> you did. Get yeah, four. <laughs> I should, I should build four. But I was going to say, one, one thing in terms of reducing the grind in my day-to-day -day play, one thing that would be huge is just something that just, just something to cut down all the buttons, all the collections. Yeah. Every little load in between each one. It's just, it just, like, it just reminds you how much, uh, it just reminds you that you're not having fun playing a game. Yeah, kind all the morning stuff you gotta do, yeah. I, I don't disagree. I still, I still vote the best way to do it is have, like, check boxes. And like you can checkbox everything, and at the end you say collect all checks, and it goes through and pulls out what's not cooling down. I feel like that would break something. Oh, what would it break something? Uh, but <laughs> you could you could drop a feather and it would break something in the game. <laughs> But it seems like, I don't know, is this, would you consider this a B-Bull Dark? I think it's a very interesting mechanic, honestly. I do. So, I mean, boldness is on the table. Perhaps. Just a thought. How much loot does it take? 150,000? What is this, 120 shards? So I need 12 times 15. 12 uh, it says 120 shards. So it'd be 12 pulls to be 180,000. So I'm I'm going to end up over 80,000 by this one, and I've only played in a couple, so that's not that bad. I haven't played in them very reliably. Do you have a G5 bracket, or is it like all yeah. grades? Yep, it's G5. That might explain it, though. You might have an yeah. easier time. No, what did I just do? Why did I earn 1,400 oh, points? Oh, because I got shards in that pull. So if I start this armada, I'm not going to get points? Is that what you're saying? I'll start one. No, I won't. Yeah, I will. No, the starter was like the only one getting the points. So you were. Was I still getting kill points? Oh, so you only get points if you start it, but nobody's getting the kill points. 
that was the case, but not all the time. Just sometimes. And again, some of those representations might have just been delayed points. Who knows? Yeah, I ain't that worried about it. Let's go home and let's kill another bio ship. Oh, who's hanging out with me now? Who that? Yo, what's up, IJ? Oh, wait, what is that? Is that somebody else's or is that just the nope. one? They're always there. So I can see them. Whoa, it just. Oh. oh, look, they're everywhere. Look at that. Yeah. They're all over the place. Dang. Probably not intended. Probably not. Yo, why? No, why are you trying to kill me, man? All right, so we got one more. Hopefully, it's going to be around 3,000, and it is. Whoa! Did I forget to put Hugh on? That was close. I thought I put Hugh on. Did I not? Man, that was close. Let's look at that battle log. That was pretty cool that the, the hostiles that were hidden, one of them actually attacked you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it still only went six rounds. I wonder, I must have just gotten hammered with RNG, I guess. Look, I had Hugh. Five. Is that what the uh, sh cloak ships that fail to cloak look like? Probably, yeah. So look, I, I had. That they just look at those shots. 50 million on standard. Or 50 million on a crit. I'm all crits here at this point. Dang, I must have just. Huh. That was really, really close. I wonder why that. Oh, we punched up. We hit the 47. We didn't hit the 47 last time, did we? Or did we? You did. Or did we? Well, what what was different? What did I Is there an XO or? I guess Gorkon. No, would really do the trick. Kang. What did I, I think IJ mean? just shook your confidence. Maybe. Got you. And his the EMH. Are, his stats aren't that good while he's being watched. <laughs> Maybe that was just bad RNG, I guess. Dang, that was that was too close for comfort, man. Hey, maybe he just had a bunch of crits against you. Yeah. You know what? This seems like a great time to check out Stewie Doo's new battle log. He can always just, you know, pop a Cerrito support and have no issues, probably. Where'd it go? I can't find it. He even he made me a special one for tonight. Here we go. I, I hate this about Google Sheets. If I want to put it in one drive, I got to open it in the other, and then. So dumb. And yeah, the now first I... thing I do when I get it is start sharing it around to the accounts. I know, it's terrible, man. I should acknowledge the fact that if I can log in with both of them, I can probably be allowed to edit with both of them. There we go. Okay. So, let's see. I have to... I have to do something about...
God, I don't remember exactly how to do this. It's been a minute since I've done it. And this one may not be even... This one may not be finished yet. He said that it wasn't, like, completely done. None of my macros are working. It might not be done yet. Well, poop. Oh, well. I'll try it out more later. Um, I would be curious as to how this log compared to the other one since I took such a beating on this. Gorkon, 5 con. Same crew. Yeah, I just I just took a whoop. I think my battle log analyzer worked. But Stewie Dew's battle log uh, thing took that in and analyzed it on my end. Oh, it did? Yeah. I don't I didn't know what to make of it, but it worked. He added lines for isolytic damage and and a range for the new hostiles to go in there as well, so I just um, meant more of like the behavior of the hostile. Oh, yeah, possibly. When is the next Syndicate event? Don't know. There is one coming, though. But its arrival is a mystery. Which is why you don't ever claim your dailies until after the daily event reset. So just hang in there. Wait a little bit. Just buy packs. Just buy more packs. Some multi -physics. Just buy more packs. I haven't gotten the right ones, not the left ones. No, I don't mean the nightly reset, Captain Taylor. I mean the uh, middle of the day, the noon Eastern one, when events actually roll over. That way, if. <laughs> That way, if there is a syndicate event, then you got your dailies all queued up and ready to claim. There you go. Always a good just call. Remember to open it at the lunch break. All right. Well, so we did see that a tier two Voyager got to punch up and be somewhat effective even against a 47 hostile. I don't know that as far as the loop is concerned I don't know that I can really complain about that to be to be frank. You know it's a tier 2 ship. It's a tier 2 ship and it's a tier 2 G3 ship by you know, for that matter. So I kind of feel like it's kind of doing its thing you know. Check and make sure there wasn't anything I forgot to pull today. Too many, too many chests to click. All right, well that looks good. Cool. Uh, speaking of syndicate, can I get them to address presets? What are you referring to, Darthana Can? Well, if he's referring to like the time that every time you unlock a preset. You can randomly, it starts randomly wiping away one at a time. Yeah, so just screenshot them. If you know you're getting ready to unlock one, just screenshot the whole thing because you got to reset them all. <laughs> oh, I do that. That doesn't stop me from hitting it, though. Oh, that's true. It does suck. And, and now, it's been uh, there since day one. And now there's new research for uh, unlocking the BD, uh, the BDA, which. I also I can do it all over again. Yeah, I think so. That would be my guess. We'll see. I don't know. But uh, make sure you throw the towel crew in there. Throw the towel crew every day against freebooters. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about the freebooter thing. All right, let's see if I got my events knocked out. Let's see. That looks good. That looks good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. I wonder if... Nah, dang on it. So I've got the token left over in my inventory. They're not going to give me a second. Oh, those weasels. They got me. 
That's all right. I was hoping to sneak a second artifact out of them. They, they, they counted on me. So now I have one extra currency in my inventory that you guys will never have. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. I'm sure lots of people can say that. Like, because there's so many different currencies that there's so many different people who can say that. <laughs> There it is. All with different currencies. There's my unknown quantity token, and I will get to keep it forever. <laughs> I get to keep it forever. That's exciting. Oh, that's silly. And then you get to love it and cherish it and keep it forever and it can be your squishy. Yep, that's my <laughs> squishy. I can call Man. him squishy. How hard <laughs> is it to just to add something that just says dismantle into a hundred latinum? No, because then everybody in the galaxy would get like 10 million latinum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't I do, do that. that with the bulky stuff. Mostly just the... Uh, like the march, the Borg march tokens, or, or something. Well, we did a little bit of Voyager yeah. fun stuff tonight. I feel like this part's a little bit boring. I'm just gonna knock out some dailies before I go to bed. Um, airstrike. Are there giveaways today? I don't think we. I don't think we hit any. We did not. We did not hit a single giveaway tonight. Can you believe that? Get That's what you great. give. We did not hit a single giveaway tonight, unfortunately. So that is sad news. Yo, Griffin, no, you've got an, un there too, you got an unknown Voyager. token. Listen, Griffin, do this. Go to your event store tab, and you're going to see three artifacts. You get to choose one completely free. I've already done it, so I don't show it here. But in your event store tab, you'll see three artifacts. And you'll get to uh, choose a free artifact with it. Make sure you read them carefully. They are ship type specific. There's only one right answer. There, There is the right answer, which is the Blade of Takan. But only if you've got an Interceptor. The, the the burning one is a slightly 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 less incorrect answer. Yeah. Now. Hey Anubis, thank you. I you know I missed that. I'm sorry, Anubis man. I feel so bad. Anubis dropped a gifted sub in here 40 minutes ago and I missed it. So did Griffin. Man, I am a terrible host. Thank you guys. Anubis says thanks for the stream at work and looking forward to watching later today. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, this. This stream has probably been a little bit less exciting than some of the others. But we did do that thing with Voyager, so that looked cool. Commander Green said, how did you guys unlock already? Because today was the day, man. Uh, finish your battle pass and finish your storyline event, and that would have been your total number of points. Look, the event ends tomorrow at Event Reset. Today's the last day. Unless you didn't do finish day one's um, Herogen one. Yeah, if you miss day one, then you're not going to earn it. Mm -hmm. But you're basic. Ransusi says, DJ, is the uh, event going to start at reset tomorrow or some random time? Oh, the PvP event. So, yeah, no, it, uh, it listen, it's still a 24-hour window. All right, so at event reset, noon Eastern, you're going to get a 90-minute event. At 1.30, it's going to end. Then you got four and a half hours off. At 6 p.m. Eastern, you'll get another 90-minute event if you didn't play in the first one. It'll run 90 minutes. At 7.30, it'll end, and then you're off until midnight. At midnight, another 90-minute event will run if you haven't played in the first two. Etc. Etc. And so forth and so on. Once you join one and score a point, you will not get any subsequent events. Yeah, Sugar Man, Micro Per. Oh, Pierced One. I like it. 
I like it. It's it's a perfect marriage. There's a safe time for everybody to get their dailies done and do their mining, but there's also purge time. Fireball says, is that tomorrow or Saturday? I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. Let me double check my calendar. Don't you guys remember seeing my gloriously beautiful calendar? Which is Saturday for me and Apex. Yeah, so Saturday for it's Apex. like a red sorry. light, green light. Yeah, but here it is right here. Directive 010 override for Friday for North American and European servers. You'll also have exchange and a freebooter event tomorrow. Yeah, Fireball, it's tomorrow. 24 hours. Go hog wild. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. Did you, did you see the data on the four motto ship abilities? I didn't see the data. No, where is it? Uh, it's somewhere in the lab a little bit further back. Maybe I can uh, reply to it to get it forward. Uh, but... I got the morale one uh, just out of the out of the chest, the Voyager chests, and I ran it against a Formata event. So you were correct in pointing out that it has zero base uh, Formata defense or isolated defense. Yeah. Uh, but what was interesting about it? Oops, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find so far back. So many posts today. What was interesting about it is when you get that negative 20% to isolate defense, it actually goes into negative, which means it's actually boosting you as a player's isolatic damage. <laughs> nice. So I got 1%, and then when that ship ability triggered, I actually got 1.25%. So that ability is a multiplicative ability then. Yep. Yeah, I'm not I'm not better than you. You're just so terrible I hit harder. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what that is. But nice. you were absolutely right, because what what ends up happening is it doesn't matter who is in the order, the Formata target will hit a different ship in different orders. So you really do need to have all explorers that have the artifact yeah. in one formata, all battleships with that artifact in the other armada, all interceptors in the battleship to really truly get the benefit of that ship ability. What's up, Duval? Duval, I'm not your favorite. I'm not your favorite cat right now, because I was talking earlier, like we we were diving through this loop a little bit more. I really think that like we're just we've got we've got confusion shock, but today I hit three hostels and I'm done. Like I think I think this loop is gonna settle down for us a little bit, Duval. I think it's gonna settle down, settle down a little bit. By the way, thank you. By the way, for your 12-month resub, baby boy. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. I think it's going to settle in. I think we're going to settle in, Duval. But I know you're when I know you're fussy loop, about it. Sorry. When has a loop ever like gone smoothly at the start versus a climb up the steps and then start walking? Yeah, but I mean it it the more co I think the complication of it is adding to the frustration. Well, yeah. But at least I'll I'll give Scopely credit in that they put a big old poop graphic on their on their post. It just tells you what to do. They didn't tell you how to do it to do it. Yeah. But at least they tell you what to do. Cruzito, I don't think that's a complaint that I can have though. I mean, you say it'll settle down in time for us to get another one, but that's that's been the feedback, right? Yes. Is add I'm a sexy piece of tech. Yeah, you sexy. That's been the feedback though, is to retire old loops to make room for the new stuff instead of keep stacking it stacking it stacking it i don't clean, I don't, I, clean I don't, up on the way in yeah i don't know that they're not really doing that you know i feel like that's kind of exactly what they're doing i think the next big one to tackle the isogen cruzito the overall reduction in grind time comes in your efficiencies and end of loop mechanics like we were talking earlier these commerce insignias can actually end two or three different loops for you technically yeah um you speed them up at least yeah those that are still working yeah them. they can get you get you a lot closer to the end a lot faster so and and there is isogen efficiency again and in, in this and in these new few researchers for the voyager so it is it is speeding up your isogen yeah 
research. So Duval, hmm. I don't I don't blame you with this loop. This loop was exhausting to even learn it. Much less try to like explore it without knowing how to do it. You know what I'm saying? But well, yeah. just like but just like most things, I think once we yeah. get a handle on it, like it'll become more common to us and it won't be quite as confusing and, and we'll be alright eventually. It's expecting to understand everything day one. It's an exploration game. You're not going to, you know, I, I see it as an exploration game. You know, you, you, you're going to make mistakes. Star Trek, you know, you, you know, if you watch some of the shows, they made mistakes in how they, and where they explored and what they did. And then they, you know, it's, so it's one of those things. It's just a part of the, part of the game, part of the learning, part of the strategies and figuring out those strategies. If Scopely give you, gives you the strategies on day one, then how enjoyable is it really you well, just go do this click this and click that you know? yeah yeah i don't i don't a hundred percent disagree with that but there there still could be a little bit like oh, this, for sure this was a complicated yeah. loop man like this was pretty this is a pretty heavy loop oh, i'm not saying it's not i'm not saying it's not entirely that yeah but that just, that just comes with the part with with learning and figuring things out and seeing what works and what doesn't and yeah yeah it's the desire to have 100 percent efficiency on day one of oh yeah on oh, you know oh, i wasted this token on day one now i'm going to be way behind well not really yeah that's you know? just it eight six seven i do i do feel like this loop this loop is I don't know if I want to say over-engineered, but it's pretty deep, right? It's it's a pretty it's a pretty complicated loop. Duval, but as far as it being a hundred dollar mistake, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I, again, I can no, see the not. I can see the frustration in the first day or two. But Duval, you know what? You missed the announcement earlier. Duval, Janeway is an additive ability. So now you want to talk about how impactful these artifacts for isolytic damage will be add 10 percent at tier one dude we're talking about net increases to damage it's gonna be yeah. significant man that's massive that's, that's huge massive, yeah that is just and, huge but counterpoint dj just as a warning uh just got a message from someone uh uh, with the more advanced monetary development, uh, who had a tier eight Voyager, and the fact that there's a single chest pull for thirty five thousand makes the loop unsustainable for them because that's like their direct tap to getting the warp tokens as well. Yeah. Uh, and oh, listen. The that, and the, the and cargo it, and decreasing the cooldown will not resolve this. Yeah, I can see that because well, what hostile are they capable of hitting with warp range at tier sure, 8 but like at 35,000 like how much can it get well who knows what the hostel is is carrying let's look i don't think stfc.space has it um let's assume tier 8 can hit a 51 see they don't have the cargo listed i don't know what they're holding The highest but, we have recorded is a level 50 with 1800 base loot. See, now mine was. Mine was 500 base, but I got three grand. Right? Wasn't it? Is that what it was? Was 500 base? No, your, your base was somewhere between. It was from around 1400. So that one only goes to 1800, you're saying? Is level 50. So that's the only one we got re recordings for. We don't know what level 60 for instance would be people know they just don't submit that is yeah. also true if you're listening in chat please help get data yeah punch it all in punch it all in all right um a tier 8 voyager probably costs a little bit of money I, like that probably was probably a little bit of money that being said, uh, uh, the whole point that I was yeah, trying to drive they keep at keep large company. Yeah. The point that I was trying to drive at Duval there is I don't know if I would call it a mistake. I, may, did you make a mistake in the loop on day one? Maybe. But the good news is it's not unrecoverable. You already got in there today, like you say, and got your sales. 
So that's a good thing. It set you behind a day or two, but you're still working towards those artifacts and this isolytic stuff. Dude, it, it's going to be big. It's going to be big, man. Uh, and Sugar Man, listen, you, you might have missed this yesterday. It's not going to actually be 100 days. Check this out, Sugar Man. In your event store, you can get a partial unlock for these 50 low buy crystals. You're going to earn the 50 low buy crystals absolutely free. There are, um, where is it? Nope, that's not it. Storyline. Here it is, right here. So you're going to get 38 out of this storyline SMS. And there's 12 in your free battle pass. So you could take the Harry Kim unlock. Um, but you could also take, because uh, there's 12 here, right? There's four. And here's another eight. So you're going to get 50 low buy crystals. So you could take the Harry Kim unlock. But you could also take 50 here and shorten your grind time by 50. So, and then you're going to earn 20 this month. So... Basically, 50 days plus your perfect engagement, you could have the ship in less than two months. Berlin, I, I'm not necessarily disagree. I, I, you say Kim is better, but Kim will likely be cheaper in the Voyager event store. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, think of it from that perspective. Think of it at the event store. What would 40 shards cost? In, in event store loot. Well, we know they're 2,000 a piece. So what is that, 80,000 event store loot to get the unlock? Do you think it would be more or less event store loot to unlock all the blueprints, if you even could get all the blueprints, well, you know? You're also delaying your delaying your damage increase. Yeah, you're is delaying. Is there any damage increase that you're wanting going to be better? Joker, that's arguable. You say Voyager is grindable, Harry isn't. That depends on whether or not you consider an event store to be a grindable, free-to-play catch-up mechanic. I would rather start working on the artifacts and start grinding on those artifacts earlier, knowing that 80,000 event store loot would get me the same thing as this art. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. 80,000 event store loot or start working on your artifacts early. I would caution any Enterprise owners looking at Harry Kim. At the time you've tiered him up to the point where he's useful in the Enterprise, you are probably no longer going to be using an Enterprise. That is I'm not possible. looking at him. I'm not looking at him for the Enterprise. I'm looking at him for Fleet Commander Kirk attaching that ability to any ship I want. Crit damage, baby. What? Which one is that one? Uh, Spock? That's, that's, that's Paris. Fleet Commander Kirk. Has the ability that attaches crit damage when you have morale. So in essence, Harry Kim is attaching whatever your current research applied is for that right. thing. So there is one niche case where Harry Kim is useful, which is also such a Harry Kim thing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here it is. When your ships have morale, they gain critical damage. But you know what? Look, these bonuses aren't small, man. Those bonuses aren't small, but it also... That's what I'm in saying. In fairness, it does require Command Center 40, so it's going to be a minute for some people. But and then was, was, and John Otto is getting Harry. Kirk. <laughs> what? Sorry. And then net damage on Isolithic. On top of that. That's true. How much can you do with 50 days of Voyager? Asked Razlis. You know, crazy enough, pretty, pretty fair amount. So 50 days with Voyager, if you're following the loop as efficiently as possible, 50 days is going to give you 10 pulls in here, which would be 30 chests. Each chest, so 30 chests, that would be 90 rolls. 90 rolls of these artifacts. And look, the odds aren't that bad. I mean, 4, 5, 7, 30. 4, 5, 7, 30. I mean, one roll is guaranteed 
four artifact shards. So, at the very minimum, at the very, very minimum, 30 times 3 is 90. At the very, very minimum, you're guaranteed 360 artifact shards in 50 days. There's your math. Jules, double check me. In 50 days, this is a five day cooldown. So that's basically every 10, that's 10, 10 refine cycles, but you're gonna triple pull it. So that's gonna be 30 chests and each chest has three rolls. That would be 90, uh, 90 rolls on the artifacts and the smallest artifact is four. So that's what I'm saying. Like at the bare minimum, you're guaranteed 360, but you also have full pull odds. You've got epic full pull odds. Yeah, just in the chat here, Neon Lights was saying that they've got two of the Isolitic artifacts unlocked already. That's the point, Razzlis. It sounds like a pretty valuable 50 days. I think your value in the event store is in Voyager. Because I can tell you this, Jules, we're not going to be able to buy artifact shards. We're not. We're probably not going to be able to buy artifact shards at the event store. But even if we could, we're not going to get 360 artifact shards for 80,000 loot. It's you know what true. I'm saying? Like, there's zero chance of that happening. Zero. So, I know you might want Harry Kim and you might talk about sourcing, but if you look at the event store as sourcing, which it technically is, then Voyager has the more valuable time. Like 50 days of Voyager is more valuable than 50 days of Harry Kim. So there's that. What is Harry Kim without Voyager? I don't know the answer to that. I, was just, I, don't, I don't either. Uh, hot, I was trying to think. <laughs> I was trying to think of something. Yeah, yeah, Griffin, I, I, did, I did do the research. I did do the research. He's just a disgruntled old man from the future. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, Neon Lights. Good for you, man. Count DeVille, I have no idea what's going on with Apex. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on with Apex. It's still not working, so... Meh. No way! You got O'Brien's dartboard? Neon Lights, I'm so jealous. That's the one that I wanted. O'Brien's dartboard, I feel like, is a great artifact. That's is a that great artifact. Is that the defensive art PvP one? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah that's that's a good one. Because you got to think, a lot of people are not going to have a great deal of isolytic offense right now. So getting 2% isolytic defense is pretty stout right now. My, my only concern with this is if you have more isolytic defense and they have damage, is it going to do the same thing that the Armada did to me? I don't know. Like, can they have negative isolytic damage? Shouldn't, but I mean, it's the game, so maybe. I don't know. Carissa says, my alliance mate doesn't believe isolytic will have an impact on PvP. You know, this is what I said on the podcast the other day, Carissa. Today, he's probably right. It's going to be very, very small. But as this new core mechanic develops, I mean, do we really think that this is the last time we're ever going to see Scopely offer isolytic damage research. Heck no. This is their this is their next four years of research right here, guys. They're done with standard damage and mitigation and piercing. It's capped. They can't do anything else with it. This, this is They had is to their, attach a new teeth to the cow. Yeah, this is it. This is where your mitigation and piercing research are going to go. For the next four years so i don't disagree 
that today it's a very small impact. But that's why I said Voyager is an investment in your future. If you just downloaded this game to tinker and you don't think you're going to be here in a couple of months, don't buy Voyager. But if you're committed to this game, Voyager is going to significantly change your damage meta, and I think it's extremely valuable. I kind of agree with Snipes. I think there's going to be... I think there's going to accidentally be negative. I no, no actually, Joker, Joker's right. ISO damage divided by one plus ISO defenses, and that actually holds true for how the Armada hit me. So that makes sense. So you can't, you can't possibly get negative. Well, how did you get negative? I thought you said it went negative. N no. Oh, because that's because of that ability, though. Its defense stat was negative. Yeah. Which means that it actually reduced the one. So it'd be it was one divided by 0.8 versus yeah. one divided by one. Yep. Yep. Giving yep, me yep. 1.25 damage. So You're that makes sense. Correct. So can't be zero. Yep. I think you are correct. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So Snipes, yeah, probably Joker's right. Probably not going to happen that way. But this Armada has an, the new formation Armadas have an actual ability. Um, but ironically, they've got the ability. Let's see, where are they? Here we go. Four Armadas. They've got the ability, but they didn't turn the ability on. Uh, they didn't ramp up the stats. So look, here's the ability. If you have a battleship or a interceptor, depending on the node, but if it attacks that style of ship, then it'll take its isolated defense and reduce it by 20%. The thing is, they didn't turn on isolated defense yet. It's still 0%. So it goes to negative 20, and that's why he got a damage increase. But you can bank on that getting turned on. That's going to get turned on. And honestly, isolated defense is on these armadas what do you think Jules I think standards probably going to be 30-40% maybe higher could, could be so anywho alright I hate to say it but Trader was right it's been another hour I gotta go to bed I got to go and I can't mine with ships with ship dock A so it's just stuck out there all right. Um, we have any other questions? Anything I can answer for you in like one minute? Just quick double check. Data cube still not there. Oh my god! It's been three hours, Jules. I I'm gonna leave it there overnight. I'm leaving my ship there overnight. I'm gonna wake <laughs> up and see. It. <laughs> Hopefully, it's there in the morning. Hopefully, some whale on your server doesn't pop in about an hour before you wake up and kill it. You know, I'm doing this for science. For science! All right, guys. Um. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with us tonight. Been a little bit of fun up in here. Uh, let me see. What was I? I was trying to look at something here. Yeah, who we uh, who we trying to raid tonight? Where's my? Did I close my Twitch window? I must have. You never go wrong with sandwich dude. Do what? You Is never he go on? wrong with that sandwich dude? Yeah. All right, let me get to my dashboard. There he is. Oh, Bafty is online too. And Brandy. We haven't, man, we haven't raided any of these for a while. I mean, we did Sandwich Dude the other night, but I, I guess we did Bafty one night last week. So Brandy is actually up. Jules says, Captain Jesse. Who's Captain Jesse? I don't have him in my... Is it just Cap? Cap. Jesse. Look, there we go. That's exactly where we're going. That's where we're going. The stream in Star Trek Fleet Command. So you guys just share a little bit of love. Listen, go in there. Throw a follow. Just tell them we said what's up. You don't have to stick around real long, but you might want to hang out just to get yourself some free toy mice. There you go. Thank you, Jules, for the suggestion. I appreciate you and Blue being here tonight. Thank you, Karkin, Stevens, Aaron, and, of course, Trader Putz hanging out there as well. Uh, I really appreciate it. My name is Ultimate DJs, and I want to thank uh, everybody who gifted tonight, Trader, Griffin, um, all, all you guys. Uh, that uh, Griffin did some. I think I saw 
trying to remember who all did that tonight. Thank you. Just thank you. Very, very much. Anubis, thank you. How about our cheerleaders? How about our cheerleaders? Yo, Carissa, leading up the board this month. Thank you very much. Uh, Carissa, freelancer, Iron Chef, thank you guys so very, very much. My name is Ultimate DJs. Bidding you farewell tonight. Please go raid the heck out of Captain Jesse. Let's show him some litter box loving. I appreciate you guys. Have a great night. Love you, man. See you later. Bye-bye.